You're just te you're just testing them, aren't you? Is there any stories that you hold dear in stars, Sophie? Because I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pref preface it with like, I'm gonna tell everyone, hey, this is supposed to fill a lot of time, and if I just go over the chronological story, we'll be here for maybe 20 minutes, then it's over. Yeah. Feel free to just stop and say whatever you want involving literally anything in the campaign or surrounding the campaign. So, Sophie, I think a lot of people are gonna put you on blast at various points. Why? Because you played the here. <laughs> All right. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wedding. That was my favorite. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know what happened that day, but what what's going on? So I don't know. Yeah, I just asked Sophie if she had a particularly favorite story that she that we're gonna get to today. Oh, the wedding. Okay. Yeah. And then I said, so a lot of people are gonna probably put Sophie on blast at various points today. And she asked why, and I said, because you're playing it here. It's me, Sophie, and Lee, and sometimes me. It's gonna rotate between us three. Yeah, a little bit. A couple of tokens thrown in there. Hello. How's it going? Oh, uh, good, 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 good. All right, I'm gonna start fishing. When do? You, how long do you want to wait till we start telling stories? Daniel's already here. Ah, uh, Daniel's already here. I wanted. Uh, I don't know. See, do either of you know how late Molly's gonna be? Uh, probably a while, because she said she was still waiting for some thing. The wrap-up meeting, yeah. yeah. I would say just wait for Morgan, because Morgan said 15 minutes. Oh, well, there we go, just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was timing. Look, I can't, well, you're look, I can't look away way. while sneezing, because I have to fish. You're muted, Hello. Morgan. Oh, hi. I'm here. You're here. Hi. Hey, guys, what the first the thing... thing I just start? Yeah. Uh, I just start fishing. So, wait, well, wait, I have, I have a good, good analogy for what is going on right now. Fishing is streaming. Fishing is streaming. <gasps> the first thing That's wasn't the Phoebus. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did you did you do what you set out to do? Me? Yeah. I'm doing it. It start. He he just started. Lee, it's not gonna happen. He's gonna be sitting here the entire stream looking what? for the stupid ugly fish. <laughs> oh, I thought he's. A... <laughs> We're gonna find the tile and get a. The Carvana. Get, you're gonna get that three percent chance of getting five Carvanas in a row and move yes. on. Yes. What happened okay. to the webcam? I'm just turning it off so that I, you guys don't have to see my stu my flat face just looking at fish and going, I'm dying on the inside. But that's the best yeah, part of your stream. I feel streams. like that's a great addition. I'm gonna be going through and writing bullet points for all the sessions that we didn't do. <laughs> uh, oh my god, yeah, Lee has fucking notes. Oh my god. Uh, Lee, not no no word of a lie. Me and Kai recently were looking through Star stuff, and I was looking at your character sheet, and I looked at the bottom. You have more notes in like more campaign notes in those tiny note box sessions in Basil's character sheet than I have seen anyone take on any other campaign <laughs> and i'm honestly wondering how do you read through them all because it's also i'm it's... gonna point out half the things you wrote were incorrect <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's nice. that's true oh that's excellent and i did not fix any of them oh, oh thank what you. game i mean we're just we're, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about a sci-fi game D, D game we do yeah, Kai's got, okay, so I'll explain what we're doing here today, because this is getting put up on YouTube, right? Uh, probably just in one big thing, yeah. I'm not cutting yeah. this up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know, so this is, this is the beginning. So, what we're doing today, this is still technically Kai's Emerald series, but he's trying to catch a Feebass, which is not going to happen. Nope. So for the next couple hours, to fill time, we talked about doing this before, we are going to talk about one of the... D and D games that we've been playing for a very long time. That's off stream. Uh, we've told stories about it. Some people have asked about it. So we just decided, you know what? We're just gonna get our friends together. We're gonna do a roundtable. We're just gonna talk about it for however long we can drag this out. 
Hopefully Kai catches a fish by the end of this. It probably won't happen. It will not happen, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so you might be getting a lot of me and or us over the next couple of Emerald episodes. Now one big episode. I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. If I don't like catch it on this stream, I'm just going to do it in my own time. I'm not going to do, do it several stream. streams of me catching up hey, fishing if you get nothing. <laughs> Just make every yeah, just 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 seventy episodes of fish, Enkai. Yeah. So well, I give you fish food if you find a few best for me. I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna stew in my anger, Daniel. That's all. So, uh, I have some of my DM notes here. Oh yeah, the idea of having everyone here too was that. For if anyone has a perspective on some event or oh, session yeah. that they want to tell, nope. they can. you guys can just jump in and say, like, okay, I want to tell this story. Nope. I've got a whole intro thing here. I was going to say, I've got the chronological order, and I've got some perspective, but I've voiced a lot of it, so I don't really need to have that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to basically say, like, going through the events as they occurred, please... Feel, I encourage you to interrupt me and jump in at literally any point to say literally you can you can say you liked a thing you can say you hated a thing you can say hey do you remember this you can say what the fuck was that I don't even remember that you can say hey you you fucked up that thing Parker, Parker. can uh -huh. we throw in a I hate stars that we have you can you yeah you can throw in anything <laughs> there are so many oh yeah yeah you can throw in anything because we because we have a while to fill and me going through chronological of this campaign will not be that long. All right, I'm on a three-hour uh, drive tonight, so... All right. Wow, you're going to be home Let's before I catch a fish. <laughs> you are going to be home before Kai catches a fish. <laughs> so, I'll say, how about we start with... Uh, we'll start with... Uh, who the character... What the party was when we started this game. Oh, so, this was... Uh, the This was really the first time I DM'd. Was this sci-fi game called Stars Without Number. Which I, in, in hindsight, I think it's a very good system, if anyone wants a sci-fi system. That's I not the. you said in hindsight was a mistake. I mean, in hindsight it was a mistake, <laughs> but the system is good. The system wasn't a mistake. Those are not mutually exclusive, don't worry. The mistake the people were. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were the mistake. But hey, the group I asked might have been a mistake, but I'm living with that If now. it wasn't for this sci-fi campaign, mistake. Pokemon D&D <laughs> never would have happened. That's true. God, I would be free of that. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, because you know, that w it would have never happened in the first place if I didn't make Molly and Sophie go to Gamers Guild. Yeah, and if That's I didn't true. get ghosted by uh, my original DM, I never would have joined That's Sophie's also thing. That's true. <laughs> or uh, Morgan's thing. <laughs> we in the first place. Kai, was yeah. it, when we were rooming, to, Kai, when we uh, rooming together, didn't you ask me if I want to go to Gamers Guild? Because yes. you were going to it that night. Yeah. I didn't even I know what was happening. Lee but... to join us, and Lee wouldn't do it. Because I wanted to play in a cool space game that ended up yeah, not being cool, cool at all. It, yeah. it wasn't cool at all, and then I just piggybacked off of Sophie and Molly. <laughs> so, fun fact for stream, Lee and I have never met in person. But yeah. we also uh, kind of met. Um, she, or sorry, they were uh, with Molly and Sophie at Gamers Guild, and um, they ended up with another group and the other two going by group, you so once. Lee <laughs> could have been in my group, but I could have been in Morgan's group. Yep. Yeah. Super and could have. Hang with Lord of the Rings, so. Not cool enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh -oh. turn my headphones just died. Rip. What just died? My headphones. Oh my god. Uh -oh. well, I, mean, I, I, no, I mean, I could just do it on Discord, so. Yeah, um, so I wanted to start with, uh, so that's how this started, and boy was this ambitious of me as a first time DM to say, you know what, I don't need to create a whole world, I'll create a galaxy. <laughs> and then, I had several aneurysms, uh, then we started, and then I had more. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, we, we were gonna say the characters, and then we... Well yeah, no, I was just introing to how this campaign even came to be. Oh yeah. Uh, so... It's just, honestly, it's generic sci-fi. There's not really magic. There's just some very alien shit, at most. Um, but, we'll introduce the party as it was as we started the game. So who wants to go first? 
I actually didn't make my character first, so someone else go, and I'll explain why I did mine. So I had the the character made first that was created by a mistake of the one shot. Um, I made a character named um, Zaheer, uh, and he can, is... can I make a suggestion? No. How about you introduce your character in Zaheer's voice? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Sophie, don't I'll send you, you, I don't I'll send you another like. $5. I swear to god! Oh my god! <laughs> just I'm give so us a... easily sold! <laughs> just, just, just give us a... You can just do one sentence. Just give us one solid Zaheer sentence. I don't remember the... Hold on, I have to really think puberty. about this. It's just puberty, Sophie. Crack rat puberty boy. <laughs> I believe in you. Here, guys. Really, I don't. Know. I mean, I can do it for you. I remember it. If you want. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. It's you want me to do it? Also here. I think everyone but Sophie remembers how Zaheer sounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zaheer, it sounds awful. Yep, there it is. <laughs> that's that's pretty much um, it. Well done. Yeah. Well, there it is. There yep, it is. This is. I I had to do this voice the entire one shot, and then. I brought it back for some reason. We're starting. That's on, that's on Parker. That's that's, that's not on. That's not on Zaheer. Incorrect. You asked if you could keep playing Zaheer, and I said yes. <laughs> you ena you enabled. You decided. This is not uh, well. This, I I don't know what to tell yeah, you. Yeah, I blame my drug dealer for getting me addicted to drugs. <laughs> All right. So, what is what is describe Zaheer? Give, give us uh, a synopsis for someone who's never met Zaheer. I've been playing a furry, I guess, for several years for this campaign. Um, so that's that's what's up. Um, see, here is um, well. Initially, I think I made him a mechanic, but I also forgot about that, and so that's okay. See, here came from a planet full of cats, and they don't. Hmm. This this was a Parker written backstory, but it's. I think, and I quote, I asked you what your backstory and you said, I don't know. And I said, yeah. I asked, do you want me to do it? And you said yes, and then I proceeded yeah. to not tell you anything. That sounds correct. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was from a more like, uh, it was kind of like feudal Japan looking area, right? Like it was pretty mm -hmm. low tech. Um, and Zaheer was all into tech and magical teleportation, because he can do that. And there. nobody liked that. That was bad. Um, but he was the the prince of his his world, and he um, had an arranged marriage uh, with a absolute psychopath. And uh, her name is Jerezy, and he ran away because he's a coward and doesn't want to do it. Fair enough. Uh, uh, personality. Crack. I don't like <laughs> grenade. <laughs> grenade. Just oh yeah, got a grenade launcher once. I don't know. I think you still have it. You still have yep, it. You, yep. We just never gave you any more grenades. Truly, this is just uh, everything horrible about me unhinged. Put it into a personified. Cat. Yeah. Um. Yep. That's that's here. A furry, that's me. It's like if the <laughs> here is if someone put every unhinged thought you had into your old scratch art as a character. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, who's next? Lee or Morgan, who wants to go second? I can go. Go for uh, it. Yeah, hold on. Hold on one second. Somebody almost hit me. That's valid. Okay, anyway. So, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. cool. So, uh, I play Noxia. She is directly <laughs> appearance wise pulled from a character from Voltron. Well, <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it. Um, uh, <laughs> as uh, in line in character with the characters that I play, I'm very on brand. Um, she is a assassin sniper, uh, lesbian dumbass. 
a lot of adjectives. And, uh, yeah. Edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Edge. Pretends to be uh, hating people, but uh, loves the party deep down. And uh, loves dogs. <laughs> All right. Loves dogs. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, is a dog yeah, person. Yeah, so, uh, this is accurate. hates cats, and that's the hero we know. <laughs> I'm on curse. Yeah, used to uh, run guns for a big crime syndicate group, um, and dated the leader of said group, and then got shunned from said group from doing things she shouldn't have, and then uh, eventually went back to the group. That's where we're at now. Quick recap. Fair enough. Lee! Alright. Uh, this was the first campaign that I played with everybody. And I made Basil. Who is my, uh, true AI. I'll point out. Glasses, Basil. Not this one on the left. This one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot Basil's art has two people. Yes. Yes. Basil is the robot. Also, Trey <laughs> is a class. That is my class. What the fuck is my other thing then? I gotta go into stars real quick. Other thing? Oh shit! I forgot what I had a class. class. You have That's another thing. No, other just than... don't worry about that. It's far less important in stars than it is the ending. Yeah, Trey no, is what it your is. entire like, identity, I... Lee. Don't worry, Chiraya is both a race and class. Just, just go. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going insane. Okay, yeah, Basil is my true AI uh, character. They were a merchant on the first planet that we all uh, were together. Uh, and in general, they are just an asshole. Oh, all right. <laughs> they are an asshole who likes plants and is really into hydroponics. What? Uh, Morgan said relatable. Yeah. Uh, uh I feel I... like. Yeah, keep going. More. I don't know if you want to do more of the background stuff in later, like when we're going through the campaign, or if you want me to just yeah. say it now. You say it whenever you feel like it's appropriate. Cool. Basically, ba Basil is like uh, the unicorn of AI because they were, or like one of the. F First set, like, they weren't the first, but they were like the second wave of AI, and uh, they had a wife who is the other person in the picture. That's Aaliyah, uh, and then that wife died, and then they went emo. I learned from your notes that they were apparently a stripper at one point. Yeah, oh yeah, I think I threw that in just because. Uh, what? Yeah, we found that out. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. When I saw the notes, it was like, all these aliases, and then there was an alias with a parenthesis said it. Briefly, th briefly was a stripper with this name. We and I was like, this, like, what? last week. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put that in there as, like, a joke for Molly. Oh, my God. Parker literally <laughs> read this out to me last week while we were talking about sci-fi stuff. I, I, I didn't. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, Basil's old as fuck. They're the oldest person in the party. Sure so they're, they're like super rare, right, Lee? Is this the origins of your fucking Genasi obsession? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Maybe. I think it is. I, th I really wanted to play a robot, and Parker let me play a robot, and... Yeah, there's a robot class. I was like, here you go. <laughs> yes. I mean, to be fair, it's no skin off my bones, because you don't use most of the robot powers. Yeah, you no, I try two. not to be an asshole and go OP. Go OP. It's really? Oh, like, another fun really thing about Basil... <laughs> Uh, part of their backstory that nobody else knows yet and that I will not say is that I oh gave Parker God. essentially a nuke what? and said have fun. Uh, I, 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 you know the thing that happened with Iggy where you were like you sent me some backstory and I was like no I didn't know this. I found some of that from your notes for Basil. Fuck! What did <laughs> I do? There's a few things. Don't worry about it. Why do I do this? Why am I like this? And somehow, uh, the next character uh, has even more dangerous stuff happening. But Molly's not here. 
Uh, we'll say, oh, yeah. we'll say, Molly should be here soon, so we'll s I was gonna say, if Molly's not here, I will introduce Toast. Molly, <laughs> Molly said they're making a grilled cheese and then they'll be here, so... Oh, you okay. okay, I'll, I'll go over my character. Hold on, I have to go to this category. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. You might say if I know your face on screen, Twitch. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, much like Morgan, I was like, man, I like Star Wars, and I also had the thought, okay, everyone in this system is going to be playing a psionic, which is just psychic powers, and I was like, I want to differentiate myself from the party and not step on any toes, so I want to be like the renegade gunslinger uh, talker of the party. Basically, I want to be like a bard with a gun. So I was like, I, you know what, I want to kind of play the old Han Solo, because the New Hope or the next uh, movie 7 from Star Wars had come out, and I'm like, you know what, something like that. So I did an old man named Old Han, never gave him a last name. Uh, he... You didn't even rename him, you just named him Han. With two ends. Or with one end, I mean. Uh, oh my god. Yes. Uh, I did do this, because I am not creative. But then I made the backstory... Uh, he basically was a uh, smuggler for various corporations, and one time he found out mid-trip that he was smuggling child soldiers and said, fuck that, and freed them, but then included said debt from the people he was hired from, and had to pay off said debt over the course of the adventure. So that's why he was on the first planet, taking up a job to make some money. Boy, we'll figure out how that went, won't we? Oh, we will. <laughs> But yeah, he's, wow. he was old and frail and somehow not the squishiest person in the party. Mm -hmm. We found well, out... Somehow was not not the first character to die. <laughs> somehow. It was incredible. But yeah, that was my character. I did yeah. guns and I did talking. Mm -hmm. uh, Basil, I forgot to say, very important. Basil really likes guns. Yeah, you do. You never I feel like you forget that half the time, too. Yes. Lee, you never let go of the guns is the problem. You like them too much. <laughs> there was a point, I'm going to point out, because I'll forget to bring this up then, but there was a point in the campaign when there was kind of a shopping episode, and and Basil was like, oh, let's go find guns, and then I looked at Basil's <laughs> sheet, because I was like, how many do you have? <laughs> Apparently, Lee was not aware how inventory space worked in this, oh in this, in this game. Had, like, three times more than they were supposed to be carrying in their inventory. <laughs> Oh yeah. Now you so I just it. said you suddenly realize that you can't carry all of this and cannot move until you drop some of them. Oh yeah, you say that. I just remembered something about playing Han because now yeah. I don't have to deal with this. Um, so Han had very little strength, and strength is how much you can carry. I could carry like three things while playing Han. So I spent oh, the yeah. entire t and one of them was my gun. And one of them was my spacesuit. So I had an inventory spot. Most of the time it was taken up by ammo. <laughs> and most of the time it was taken up by ammo. <laughs> that was funny. It was. So whenever people said, okay, so can you hold this for me? I'm saying no. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Get that fish so, guy. Get that uh, fish. We then have uh You know what, Sophie? Molly didn't make it in time. Who is who is who is Molly playing? Oh, am I introducing Tony? Alright, fellas. Uh Tony's a slut. Tony uh <laughs> Uh, well, Tony done. is a nope. That's that is where I'm starting. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Tony worked, uh, I believe, as a sex worker um, on the first planet, and Noxia was Tony's bodyguard. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay, that's correct. Um, Tony is a shapeshifter, so truly quite flexible, and in the work they do, that is that is something that is quite handy, I believe. Um, Tony uh, doesn't like to fight. Tony is a coward. Tony, uh, anytime there is a battle, Tony will shapeshift into something useless and hide. Uh, they have turned into a barnacle. They have turned into a rock. And a box. They, yep, a box. Yep. Um, what such a array of shapeshifting array of wonders. Um, let's see. Uh, Normally, I believe Tony's just face form is just beautiful, sexy blonde lady, and Tony is 
Uh, the name is tramp stamped on uh, the back of <laughs> on their back. Um, just just their name, Tony, in case they forget it or anyone else does for that matter. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of like what Tony does, but the answer is nothing. <laughs> she gets around. Yeah, Tony's very flexible and um, you know, just. They're, they're, just, they're here. Uh, I just, I think it's really funny that in Kai's stream and videos, there is very limited window that shows who Molly is as a person, and the picture that is painted is quite accurate. Yeah, I do like that picture of Tony that we have. Like, <laughs> it's just the T one thousand from Terminator. <laughs> That also comes up later. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like current Tony form. Oh my god. That's really Silver funny. Surfer Tony? Silver Surfer Tony, yeah. Okay. Uh so <laughs> there was uh so we started. Uh that was that's the party as it starts, right? And we started on this little planet, uh Way up here. I like all these windows before it's a big problem. Uh, called Opportunity. And uh, Opportunity is kind of the Wild West of a planet. Uh, sometimes, literally. It's very dusty. Most cities are in these domes that protect them from the sandstorms. And the one particular city that the campaign started in was run by a mafioso-style government. It started with uh, everyone sort of gathering up as this job was being offered by this mafioso group for a substantial amount of money. So all of them took interest, and they were all handpicked uh, to come in and interview for the job. The job, as it was, was to uh, deal with a group of kind of psychopathic gangsters who was who were occupying a warehouse downtown and were basically just shooting at anything that came near because they were crazy people. That was pretty much the job. So, as it was... The party met the the party met the uh, head of said mafia. So, and then they met uh, the one who was going to give them more information, which was the mafia. So, son, Danny. Danny. Oh, L little Danny. <laughs> the, little Honestly, Danny. Yeah, Danny. Poor little Danny. Poor little Danny. We'll get on that. In hindsight, maybe we were the psychopaths. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. Uh, so, Danny, of the Carson family, son of Richard Carson, and yes, I do have these notes still, um, showed you guys around, showing you to Basil's shop, where you armed yourselves and such, and then you all, which by the way, because Morgan's not here to defend herself, so I can, I can, I can already start with the sidetracking, I gave Morgan a motorcycle at the beginning of this like there's starting kits of stuff that every character gets and and i and me and morgan said hey it'd be cool if noxia had a cool motorcycle to get around because i was like you know what i want to give them one vehicle just just because that won't really do any harm morgan instantly left it behind and never came back for it no it's gone it's super it's either super sold gone. off or in the scrapyard at this point so Got, everyone got to Danny's car. Went to the uh, went went to deal with the uh, situation. Oh, and I and as a let's go ahead. I was gonna say this is when I I did my first oopsie. So I used <laughs> I used one of just my just the first just the first of many. But I used my foci, which is just a skill. It's like a feat in five e. And mine was to have a contact in the city, and I used it. So I contacted someone. And the, to TLDR it, I got into contact with 
one of the people that made said weapon. And they had already planned to try and make an attempt to take it back. So I made a deal. The weapon hasn't been mentioned, by the way, yet. The thing. What we're heading there yeah. for, basically. Yeah. I made a deal to get said thing back. And uh, I left out the part because I forgot to even think about it, where I asked for payment for doing such a thing. I basically just walked up and said, I'll do this thing for you. And they're like, sure. <laughs> but they, they did give us assistance in this matter. We, we now were working with them. But yeah, that, that was my first oopsie that I'll talk about. You got to the end. It was so funny when you got to the end of it all and we were like, all right, so what are you going to pay us? And they were like, you didn't ask for money. Yeah, I forgot. And you're like, well, I, <laughs> it's on me, guys. <laughs> Morgan said maybe we could... <laughs> Morgan said we maybe we could go back for the motorcycle. Mm. Oh my God. Well, we'll get on that. I think we should just maybe never go back to that place ever. I think that's a that's a safe um, safe thing to do. So uh, probably, yeah, uh, Old Han got in touch with the Omnibreak Corporation, which informed everyone that these uh, well informed informed Han. Uh, they didn't really talk to the rest of the party. That these uh, this group called the Rusters, which is occupying the uh, the warehouse, had a experimental new weapon, which was more or less a spider drone with a rail cannon mounted to it. Uh, mean, to say the least. Very, very destructive. So they wanted Han to get it back for them intact. And uh, in return, they would offer assistance with the situation. Han agreed. And then, I believe, as the order of operations went, you guys went to the area where the warehouse is occupied. Well, I'll point out, actually, they they gave Han a lot of money so that he could buy it back. That was the plan. That's right. You were supposed to fake a deal with them. Yes. And they gave you a bunch of money in your account to pay him. So, as you guys went there, Danny was your driver at this point, and Danny, uh, Danny was super excited because Danny wanted to be a starfaring adventurer and said, this is the most bit of adventure he's ever had. So he wanted to come with. And I believe you guys tried, convinced him to like, hey, just hang back. Just just stay outside. Just don't. Yeah. Just, just don't. I think we tried to get him to leave, but we pretty much settled on him not coming with us into the fucking thing. Yeah. So you guys also went in, uh, went across the street to go up on the roof, uh, and kind of peer out at them. And uh, one of the one of the rusters took a shot at you guys from way across the street. Yep. So in this system, when you're level one, you start out with. It's actually possible to start out with one HP. I think the max you can start out with is like five. And Basil took. Two or three damage in I one shot, two, which left because it left them with three. one hit point. It left them with one hit point. So already a near death experience. <laughs> Instantly. Fine. Instantly. Yep. So that happened. After that, uh, we had a situation where. I don't really remember how you guys handled it, but you basically walked in the front door and said, hey, let's make a deal. Yes. More or less. I think you, we you, ended up you like went waving up... the white flag or something to say that. Yeah. You basically said, hey, let's make a deal, because you, went, you, went, you all went across the street and were like, hey, let's just buy it back. And mind you, everyone else is just following Han's lead, because Han hasn't really told anyone about the plan so well, far. I, I still did. I didn't tell them who I met with, but I told them, okay, we're going to make a deal and try and buy it back. I I, I was pretty vague, because I still wanted to keep some secrets on who I was working for in this instance. But like, I still told them, this is the idea, so that we didn't just go in and die. So we were all on the same page, so to speak. So you all went in met with the, the psychopathic leader of the rusters called Shep. And uh, how'd that go, Kai? Would you like oh, to reveal us on that one? So, 
as it started, they pulled out the drone and showed off its guns. And we were led into this warehouse, basically. And there's tons of guards and everything, but we were here to make the deal and buy it. And he started off just by showing it off. And then he said, but we want to show you, like, the real power or something. So they brought in a target. And the target was Danny. That they they found him outside, didn't they? And so... I remember you doing a very slow countdown to him about to kill Danny. He was like five, four. And I was like, is I anyone probably, gonna- I probably did something like that. Yeah, and I was like, is anyone gonna jump? Cause I was waiting till like the last second. Like, is anyone got any ideas on how to not get this guy killed? The son of the, our boss? <laughs> and no one did. So the only thing on my mind was like, okay, I'm going to try and convince Shep to show me this thing's capabilities with precision by not killing Danny. That's what I said. I was like, you could kill him, I can tell, but you can kill anyone with just a gun. How about you try and, like, not kill him, just, like, disable him? You should have been like, why don't you take off an ear? Well, maybe you should have <laughs> said that. Vincent Van Gogh him. <laughs> but anyways... Hi, Molly, by the he way. kind oh, of did that. Ear. Hi, Molly. We're still... We're still on the we're still on the first session of of stars. But yeah, yeah. first session. It was a long session. Oh, uh, we just uh, well, also we were introducing people's characters and what the party was and stuff like that. Mm. And to be fair, nope. session one was long. Session one was long, but we'll yeah. speed it up. But more. he kind of did that and then um, took off like his leg. He took his arm. His arm. He blew off. He blew off his arm, entire arm. And I was like, oh. That's that's not, that's not good. So he was alive for a bit, but we ended up saying like, okay, let's let's make the deal because I was trying to speed it along so we can get Danny to a fucking emergency room. Uh, and then I looked at my phone in the campaign and um, had no money at all to buy this with. So that almost went south until Parker brought in all of the guards from the Omnibrake Corporation who just started this huge shootout. And I yeah, think- they basically used you guys as bait. <laughs> yes. And at that point, the fight started and we just started doming some of the guards. I think I domed Shep or something. Someone killed him like pretty instantly so he didn't get to use the weapon. Yeah, someone point blanked the leader so he wasn't a thing for in the entire fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you mention that I definitely could have saved the kid's life? But oh I yeah, I was about to say so that. So after the fight, after the fight, Danny was still there, just bleeding out, and and everyone was like, "Man, that's a bummer." Little did we know that Tony had a basically very advanced medical kit in their inventory. Even I don't, I, I don't think I don't know if Molly forgot or if Molly just didn't. No, I didn't use forget. It. I actively was like, I don't want to save this. Yeah, I recall that. <laughs> are you guys? Wait, are you kidding me? No, no, I'm not kidding. Kidding. I don't want to save him. Why would I do that? He's the son like, of the person that hired him. Shit on this random asshole. Yes. He wasn't random. Well, he was random enough that he didn't get the medical care. I guess Tony didn't care about him. <laughs> Maybe you should have cared a little more. Well, well here we I'm are. Here we are. He's dead now. So uh, that happened. Obviously, I'm Danny died. Really horribly. Another fun thing about the fight, which establishes something very important about Tony's character. Uh-huh. Ma Tony's Ma do you want to say? <laughs> what was what? Tony's Tony role in the fight? What, what was Tony's role in said fight? Uh, I shapeshifted into a fucking crate and didn't get hit. Hey, well done. That in character creation. <laughs> yeah, alright. So, after the fight, and after Danny died horrifically... Well, he wasn't dead yet. ...immense pain... Uh, the yeah, damn, that's a bummer for him. Richard Carson, the, the head of the mafioso-style government, came down, rushed his son to a hospital. His son was obviously well, dead on the table, basically. I'll, I'll point out, we rushed him to the hospital and then left before they got there so that we were not killed. Except for gotcha. Basil. Yeah, so Basil stayed to, I think, try to explain. Uh, yeah, hey, Lee, what happened next? Uh, I, I remember what it was. It was, um... Throughout that whole session, Basil was pretending to be a VI because that was their cover on Opportunity. 
So, essentially, Gazel just, like, stayed there and was like, yeah, fucking shoot me, bitch. Wow. Hmm. And then they did, and then Basil died. Yep. So, uh, fun thing about AI, true AI in this game is their core, which is like their heart, essentially, is elsewhere and hidden outside of the current body they're inhabiting. As long as that lives, they can inhabit other robotic bodies. So, the party went back, eventually, to get uh, Basil a new body. Yeah, we, we went back and eventually because we didn't know Basil was a true AI at that time. Yeah. No, you guys, so, you, you guys just thought I was dead. Yep. You, you super died. You super got shot in the face. Bummer. So, <laughs> then, as opportunity uh, proceeded, far off schedule from what I thought was going to happen, but, you know, here we were. Uh, we, so, the gang uh, kind of bribed and fought their way onto a stolen ship across town and flew off. And at that point, I said, you have two options. You can either, uh, in terms of the ship's jump range, you can either go to Yelia, or you can go to Zola 5. And they asked, what, was the, what were these places? And I was like, well, Yelia is a trade, uh, a trade hub that no one has heard from or gotten a signal from in years. They were like, that's spooky. And then they asked, what's Zola 5? And I said, it is a widely renowned vacation destination planet. <laughs> And they were like, hell yeah. <laughs> so obviously, we went there. But I'll went point there. something out. And nothing this, bad um, happened. No, no, let me point something out on the trip. Okay. Because there is one detail that you skimmed over. And that in okay. order to get this ship, we stole it. But we didn't just still steal it. Um, I wasn't trying to do this, but we killed the crew. Yep. Oh. Except there for one guy. The hangar. Who we took out. prisoner. Yep, I, the whole time, was asking... Oh, Yes, yeah, and the that. whole time I was saying, why <laughs> the fuck did we do this? Why? Why did we even take a prisoner? But we did it anyways. Fuzzies. Super did. It, it earned Super. us nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I think when you guys landed, he was like, can I go? And you guys were like, yeah. <laughs> well, they said, no, we got to keep in the ship. I said, I'm just going to let him out of the ship. I can't do this. I was still kind of a good person. I couldn't just keep this man fucking hostage yeah. unfortunately for you everyone else playing was not a good person <laughs> yeah i think stars is the one where we all just do Play not actively bad people uh-huh i don't yeah i don't do that <laughs> i think noxia like ex like you got noxia executed, executed someone like three of the other crewmates and then zaheer blew the rest of them up oh <laughs> yeah yeah, that sounds correct. That was after Tony seduced a guy to get into the hangar. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. So we landed. Who wants to? Does anyone else want to uh, start? I, I, I'll I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. I'll I'll keep summarizing. I'll keep the timeline. So you got to Zola Five, and you landed the ship, and this is a junker of a ship, basically. It's it's not great. So they weren't that attached to it, but they just landed and got off, and were like, okay. Let's see what's around here. And then they looked around, and it was basically this really nice, posh, like, spaceport. All these families coming here on vacation and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> and I believe it was at this point, because all of you just innately at this point in life trusted nothing that I put in a campaign. Literally nothing. I just don't trust you. So you got to the spaceport and were immediately, like, suspicious of everything. Which, obviously, was the right choice in it, hindsight. It was. You're saying this like it's a bad thing. I mean, it's not It's not a bad thing. It will be a bad thing soon, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> you're the one that put the seeds there. of doubt in our minds. So you got there, and we're immediately suspicious of everything, because you started looking around, and you're like, wait. This, like, five-star... Because this is a planet with, like, dotted islands. Imagine Hawaii the planet. These islands are everywhere, but each island also has a different theme. So they were just like, hey, let's go to the casino island. Uh, and then they found out, wait, this like five star resort, uh, all inclusive trip is free. How? Well, I don't think it was free, but it was basically free. It cost dirt. I, it cost it, pennies. Like, together, it probably for each of, her, each of us, it cost like a hundred bucks. It was, it was nothing. Yeah. So you guys were instantly all like, no. 
Please, this has got to be something wrong. Now, at this point, I had to miss a session. So please describe the session knowing that I was not present. No, well, we first we met we met some of uh, my favorite r- long running characters. We met Alfonso Christine. and Christine. Oh yeah! Oh Alfonso my gosh! Yeah, I love them. We did meet them. The power couple. Alfonso was like a cybernetic guy, decked out in uh, enhancements. And Christine was Christine. Christine was just a fast talker and the most valley girl of senses. Yes. Yeah, and Christine and Tony got along great. Oh, perfectly. And. I will say it was a good thing that Tony didn't use the Lazarus patch on that loser Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not like we would have yeah, not had to... his life with it later, didn't you? Oh yeah, it's I not sure like we... fucking did. It's not like we wouldn't have had to run away from opportunity with guns being shot at us or anything. We would have gotten paid. Hey, you saved Alfonso though. Yeah, worked out great for me. I think I made the right choice. I think being selfish pays off. Uh, so you met. So let's see. What, I'm trying to think of all the characters that you introduced. You also met You're the like, okay, dad. Uh, Christian Alfonso, and then yeah, there was this real, real nice soccer dad who just liked to like to talk to Kai a whole lot, especially because he was a real nice fella. <laughs> I, I looked like an old guy, so it, he probably seemed like I would understand him. Ah, like, oh, yes, a fellow dad. <laughs> no, a fellow dad. Oh yeah, I was a dad. Yeah, <laughs> you looked like a dad. So well, he was a dad. Remember? Yeah, but no one else knew that. Yeah. This is news to me. Sorry that we left your kid orphaned, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, all that, uh, you know, those are pretty much all the characters that introduced that you got, NPCs that you guys got to go on vacation alongside. So then you went to this nice island resort along this really fancy monorail you got out y'all had your own rooms it was fancy there was a big casino there was a big luau for the first night if you needed literally anything you could uh you could just ask and someone would give it to you there was free spas there was all of it uh i believe there was also art made of this at one point of the vacation episode oh it's on my fridge yeah oh no oh i'm gonna go get it (laughs) <laughs> okay, also, apparently that Morgan. Oh, we'll get to that. What, what Morgan? Say? No, it, it's, it's, it'll come up later. Okay. Uh. So, as the as all all of that was happening, you guys got there, and what was the first thing that happened? Does anyone remember what the first? I remember thing that what happened? it was. We went to the luau that you just said, and there's mm-hmm. everyone on stage. And remember how we kept someone hostage and I let them go. They tried yeah. to leave the planet and then we saw them. How do you remember this when you weren't there for this session? Because this was the exact last thing that you said and then ended the session. That's right. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wasn't he? He was like a he waiter was... there. And no, I yep. remember being very suspicious of the food. And I rolled like 10 perception checks on the food before I ate it because I really thought that you were going to poison us via yeah, the no. food. And the food it was, was not. Fine. The food was fine, but the man we took hostage was there at the luau working as one of the staff. Oh, that's right. He didn't recognize us, right? No, he did not or recognize like... you. He was super yeah. smiley. He was polite. Nothing like you knew. Nothing like you met him before, because he was like, he was just like a trading grease monkey before. But yeah, this is the point when I had to miss a session. I couldn't be there. I don't remember why, but it doesn't matter. And this is the point where cats have the bag where something is suspicious. One hundred percent, something is happening. So, uh, the next session, I st- I had a friend from high school that I was like, hey, you want to play d and I'll show you what it's like. And he had a passing interest. So I had him make a character, join in as a guest for a little bit. Uh, I think I still have his character, uh, Zedan. You need to tell your friend that he's my favorite. Like, I'm oh, still I've, obsessed with I've him told to him. Day. So <laughs> he made this man, this, this, this absolute unit, Exodius P. Vetrov. And uh, his his gimmick was that he punch. Kai, you kind of filled in his shoes later, didn't you? Uh. Um. So he was fun. He was a barrel of laughs. Uh, he didn't take anything too seriously. Uh, then I believe what happened was Tony to investigate. Well, Molly, what'd you do? What was it? What What was your plan? Because you were like, "All right, it's mystery time. Let's go." Okay, my thought process was there's something up with all of like the staff. So, my my idea was, okay, 
if I sleep with one of them, I can then steal their clothes and pretend to be one of the staff and then find out more information. But that did not succeed. <laughs> what happened, Molly? What happened? I, I, I was unsuccessful and I was for sure taken in by um, the Sneeple. Yeah, the, uh, the Sneeple. I was <laughs> drunk Sneeple at two. Uh, I didn't get killed because I was I was interesting because I was a shapeshifter, so I didn't get murdered, which was good. But um, I was put into a tube, and I did discover that this planet was full of Sneeple. Yep. So the there was the Sneeple as a <laughs> they're not the real names, but the party has said that this so much that we just call them the Sneeple now. <laughs> they're snake they people. Are so they're sneeple. They are snake people. So imagine, uh, you know, big snakes, big cobras with arms. Uh, and some hyper intelligence, some intelligence with some of them. And uh, what they did basically was this is all a scheme to find people, uh, lure them in, sedate them, bring them underground, harvest their organs, sell them on the black market, get rich. That was most of the plan. And then they would use the skin and they would inhabit it to become those people so that they could pose as humans. Which, like, honestly, I respect the hustle. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> you aren't the one who got stuck in a tube. That's true. Tony Super got put in an experimental tube because they were like, wow, this is interesting. We need to figure out if we can harvest organs from this creature. Yeah, the answer's probably no. I don't really know what's going on in there. <laughs> uh, he's, it's kind of just amorphous blob in there. Yeah. Does Tony have organs? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I can always stab Presumably, Tony and find out. Tony has some sort of Anatomy, Ana like something, but you it might it probably isn't like human organs. We think you have lungs to breathe. Yeah, I would assume that I have the enough organs to function. Mm -hmm. So, what then proceeded to happen was the party was on a hunt. They were like, "Okay, Tony's missing. We gotta go find." Oh, it's coming, Morgan. Don't worry. Uh, the the part the party was like, "Okay." Where is, where is Tony? last place they went was to go fuck a waiter in the bathroom, so let's go check the bathroom. <laughs> and they did. And uh, what did Exodius P. Vetrov do? He said, I punch toilet. And I said, okay, roll. And he fucked it up. It was near max damn. It was insane. So He punched real good. He punched the toilet and the tile underneath. Thus revealing the trap door that leads into a <laughs> underground vent system, tunnel and vent system, which That's Tony was. Up Parker's second planet. Uh, yeah, um, it's on. It always takes two sessions. It's just two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so this was. I, would, I had a lot more mystery and intrigue to go around it. <laughs> I was. I even had plans that Molly was going to get to play one of the Sneeple posing as Tony, and it was oh, going to be fun. That's so cool. It I wish I got to do that. It was going to be gonna interesting. Be cool. Uh, uh, and then, uh, then the toilet was punched, and then they found the underground vent system, then they found the labs where the organs were being harvested, then they found out the entire plan, and I was like, right. <laughs> okay. And what happened after that session? My friend from high school left and never played again, so he <laughs> came into my campaign, punched a toilet, revealed all my plans, and left. And no one knows anything else about him in this group. I, I never him met so him. Much. Kai never met him. Kai, he, to Kai, he has a whisper on the wind. No clue. To me, he's a legend I aspire to be. Um, the plan was foiled by Toilet. There is one final thing that happened before I came back, because I remember how, how I came back. Oh no, I'm getting there, don't okay, worry. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. No, there, so in this underground system, like network, which has all their labs and stuff like that, uh, some fights ensued. Uh, there was some sneaking around and discovering things. Tony was rescued. And then the the Sneeple had their failsafe. They were like, all right, jigs up in this place, sink it. So what do they do? They literally sink the island into the ocean to try and drown everyone. <laughs> and uh, so, Kai, how'd you come back the next session? So, having heard basically nothing because i don't remember what happened uh i come in and i am on my you, han 
Han basically, we said that he was asleep in a fifth floor uh, hotel room, taking yep. a nap for that taking entire a nap. session. Nap. Woke up, there is water at my ankles. I look outside. My friends are trying to get a boat. And I say, what the fuck happened? <laughs> what did you guys do? What the fuck? So I am told You're... that they, Tony tried to fuck a guy. They punched a toilet. Uh, found the uh, unconscious body of the dad we said before. Uh, yep. Looted him. Left him behind for dead. Turned out he was a secret agent for a go foreign government. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Left oh, him yeah. behind for dead. They did leave him for dead. <laughs> uh, and then got this boat after saving Tony and finding all this stuff. And now we're trying to leave because everyone wants to kill us. And I'm like, it was one session, guys. Basically, the only ones that made it <laughs> off the island were you guys, Alfonso and Christine. There was a few innocents. They didn't last long. They didn't last long. Yeah, you know, I... But there's one more thing I'm going to tell before I hand the, hand the, the narrator uh, stick back to Parker. When we got onto this, I was still tired because it was only a nap, and so was everyone else, and it was night. So Parker had to say, okay, so you all start fading off into sleep. And he starts describing everyone as having these dreams. But Lee, but Lee's a robot and says, I can't sleep, and I don't want to be here alone with everyone sleeping. So Lee shakes me awake and forces me to stay up. This means I have exhaustion. I cannot sleep. So Parker pulls me in the secret, says, you start to see these two suns on this desperate planet, and then you wake up. And I'm like, Basil? I have not slept! Everyone else then got pulled into secrets, as they were told these future prophetic dreams about their lives <laughs> and I'm sitting here exhausted fucking tired on a boat while everyone else is napping can I point, can I point out something <laughs> yes so where those dreams came from was well hold on does everyone remember what their dream was yes okay yeah. who wants to share first go ahead just go share I think Sophie needs to go last <laughs> yeah that's true that's true <laughs> Uh, I can go first. So Wait, my dream remember. actually did, like, you know, kind of come back and is now still relevant. So I took notes on it because I knew it was important. I could tell. And, uh... <laughs> I could tell. Well, it was... I, when you get I pulled into secrets, you can tell. I was, I was, like, floating in space, and there was, like, a big black pyramid, and I floated over to it, and then when I got into the pyramid... I saw, like, all of these tubes with different, uh, like, people in them, and they were talking, and I couldn't understand, and then I woke up. Yep. It was, uh, very cryptic. Yours was purposely the most vague one, that's for sure. Yeah, I think I didn't get, like, a crazy amount of information from the first stream, but, like, I still got enough to be like, this is important. Black Pyramid in space with crazy four crazy beings inside. Hmm. Important probably gonna come up later. Hi Morgan, can you hear us Hi. any better now? Yes, absolutely. My service is full and I'm here for dreams. <laughs> Wonderful. You want to go next then? Sure. Um, so in my dream, uh, I was standing, he was in a field, mm -hmm. uh, with a bunch of like flowers and stuff and then I see uh, my ex-crime boss girlfriend uh, in a wedding dress in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like, oh my god, like, why are you here? And uh, I look at her closely, and she has a big, just like, bloody, like, hole through, like, her abdomen. Um, and then I start looking around on the ground, and uh, there's just like a bunch of dead bodies. And uh, I think there was a grave of a bunch of bodies of people that I may or may not have known. Um, and then I woke up. Oh, fuck, Can I say something? Or, sorry, Nash said something. She she said, she whispered like in your ear as she was dying, she is somewhere else. Yeah, she's somewhere else. Yeah. So that, something that's about your dream. Yes. <laughs> this is exactly like in Breaking Dawn Part 1. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Bella has the dream. 
Because we all know. Oh my god. We get at her wedding. Because she yeah. is Molly's, Molly's, uh, Molly's, Molly's, uh, Molly's outed me as an avid Twilight lover. Yeah. Oh, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just saying, Parker, if you saw that scene, you'd be like, oh, I guess this is similar. Okay. Yep. You, hey, you know what? Just find a YouTube video of the scene and, and DM it to me somewhere. I'm going to right now. Okay. Because if that's true, boy, is that unintentional. <laughs> no, I know what Molly's talking about. And <laughs> is it accurate? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Anyways. Uh, so that happened. Also, that was, Morgan's was slightly more straightforward than uh, Molly's. To be fair, Molly's was cryptic as hell and made absolutely zero sense in context. Uh, uh, oh, Parker, I have another uh, thing I want to throw away. Go ahead. Um, about Sneeple Planet while I'm Go here. Ahead. Um, okay. So I did steal a large sum of money from the Sneeple, and it absolutely will not come back to bite me in the ass oh, at yeah. point in this roundtable discussion, by the way. Yeah, it, it, by by large sum, you mean you you uh, like, well, after you guys had killed a bunch of a bunch of Sneeple, you found one of their data pads that essentially yeah, had their open accounts. Steal, like a little under a million dollars. Like, it Are was. You kidding? No, it was way more than was that. It, you need to add another zero it? on there. Yeah, he did. Really? It was seven wow. million credits. Are you kidding? Yeah, a few of us had about like five hundred. Oh, you had that, but somebody. Yeah, let's Parker, look at my sheet. See how much money. I have. All right. Oh, I'll, I'll I end thing. I'll look at your sheet. Oh no! Yeah, this this amount of money comes up a few times. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right. It was it was seven hundred thousand. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Is this a fucking well, joke? No. No. no that's, that's is this correct? This is why I planned to give Noxie so much shit next time we played. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, revealed this. I revealed this at like the end of like our last um, like <laughs> right before of where we ended. Yeah, right before we went on break. <laughs> yes, I am filthy rich. Yeah, I think it was only to like some of the party though. But... And let's let's all just put a <laughs> let's all just put a bookmark in the fact that Noxia stole stole from a lot of the Sneeple's funds, a significant now, chunk. We'll get to that. We'll get to what's happening. Oh yeah, all right, let's just all bookmark that. So our grand finale, which by the way, Basil did not get to have a dream because Basil is a robot and doesn't need to sleep. Rip. Unfortunate. Uh, Han was going to have a dream. We know what happened there. Uh, our grand finale. Sophie, what was your dream, if you can remember? And if you can't remember, I'm going to do it no, again. I, I, I recall, uh, I think the... I, I think I got it, probably. Okay, okay. okay. So I remember uh, Zaheer was uh, shown uh, a place back in his home world. And he saw the local village shaman, and I think she was trying to reach out to Zaheer. Um, and she was telling him to come back, and um, then suddenly, like, the little hut that she was in got, like, pierced with a bunch of dark shadows and stuff. Wait, question. What did the shaman look like? A cat. Remember, or like a cat? Obviously, <laughs> what color cat? It was a black cat. Uh oh. Black cat? Oh. Yep, black cat. Black yep. cat. Yep. Yep. All right. I don't know if you can hear me, but yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, there was this shaman. And I want to let everyone know that the reason that a lot of you had these visions open to what your futures were going to hold is because of this shaman reaching out to Zaheer. Oh. Because of the psionic power this shaman employed <laughs> to reach out to Zaheer. Saying, urgently, Zaheer, my prince, we need your help. Please come home. We are all dying. And when we woke up, it was a lot of people saying, Tony was like, yeah, mine didn't make any sense. That was weird, which is fine. Noxie was a little cagey on hers. Um, Han was pissed. Zaheer was like, I was in a house that got pierced after I was talking to a lady and did not try to explain further than that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Parker really, really wanted me to just get into my backstory. And he tried so hard a couple of times and I just was not having it. Well, it's like, my original plan was like, okay, we're going to start with Kaja. Which, by the way, Zaheer is a Khajiit. Yes, from the Elder Scrolls. 
because originally Zaheer was That's made in the Elder Scrolls one. Zaheer was an Elder Scrolls one shot where he was actually yeah. a Khajiit, and I just said, "Screw it, I'm gonna take the Khajiit race." They're in stars now. All right, I think I think we need to derail a little bit to talk. We've about already that derailed. <laughs> we want to talk about yeah, that we one, can, No, one we shot, can't talk about the whole one shot. I can sum that one shot up in three sentences. We we it. cannot talk about the whole one shot. <laughs> that one shot was. Yeah, I, I that was legitimately the first time I ever DM'd. I said, "All right, I got this campaign, or like I got this uh, campaign. It's probably a one shot, maybe a two shot." I didn't. I underestimated how much fuck around time players needed. Obviously, uh, we never got to the actual story I planned. Instead, the players all killed each other, and Zaheer escaped after White Run was burning in the background. Okay, to be fair to me, I don't know jack shit about Elder Scrolls, and Parker said you're a you're a fucking cat wizard, and here's your spells, but I'm not going to tell you what any of them do. So I thought it'd be funny. Was to go through the list so, and use every goddamn the spell. Is, <laughs> the thing is, Sophie had me sitting next to her, and I know all the Elder Scrolls spells, so Sophie was just judging on what to do based on my like. That's true, Re your facial Re expressions. I have watch you. You summoned a horde of demons that eventually burned the city to the ground. Yeah, and a giant crocodile that sat on the hotel. I don't really, it's fine. Right, if we, if we keep really talking remember. about this, Abby will never get to talk. Yeah, well, uh, nope, all it. right, right we're back. Origins. That's it, that's the entire one shot. So, we brought Zaheer back for some reason. Uh, and yeah, He's so. such a beloved character. But anyways, after these dreams, Zaheer made no attempt to tell the party, hey, there was this urgent thing going on. Zaheer tried to explain it once, said, screw it, and then... Molly? I mean, Sophie? Uh-huh. Sophie, what was the decision-making process there of... Uh, eh. no, there was no process. Um, I... I don't know. There was nothing in my head. Just, just rolling. I didn't think much of it. Just rolling. Yep. Just... Zaheer's a dumbass, and so am I. So, <laughs> not great. So, after everyone recalled their dreams and Han was miserable because he was still tired, <laughs> um, the boat proceeded to be attacked by Sneeple a few times, and uh, it more or less you guys fought them off. A few innocents, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Alfonso, like we said before, Alfonso's life was saved by Tony. By Tony. The Lazarus badge. Yeah, fuck Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, so get Danny. fucked, Danny. It came in handy that I refused to save him because I didn't care about him, but I liked Alfonso, so I saved him. Also, I would love to clarify that any time there is any sort of like fighting or attack mentioned, Tony did not participate. That's well, correct. Right. This when I introduced your character. I yeah. think just recently, which is like two years into the into the campaign, you said maybe I should learn how to use a weapon. Yeah. I, I did buy a weapon, but, like, we'll see how much I use it. But I had a weapon the whole time. I had a sword. Yeah, that, that's right. You carried around a sword that you used as a fashion accessory, I think. Yeah, I did it. Every time, like, people would, I would say, I have a sword. And no, everyone would be like, what the fuck do you have that for? I I had it. I had a sword. <laughs> there was a time later on where you and Noxia had just like a sword duel just to fuck around a little bit. Noxia cut you once and you cried. Correct. <laughs> but I have a sword. You do have a sword. So. Uh, another thing that happened during this mm -hmm. uh, is the origins of the weird, weird bullying triangle of Zaheer, Tony, and Basil. Oh uh, my I... god. What? That'll oh, be real? Yeah. You guys understand this triangle a lot better than I do. It. I don't understand it at all, and I'm in it! <laughs> it's called Zaheer. You had some weird bullshit about explosives that somehow Tony got in the middle of, and you trying to, like, rip off Basil or, like, steal something. I don't even Basil know what happened. Like, I was a I part of some... <laughs> I But Basil have, like... assumed it was my fault! <laughs> Yeah, I truly have very little memory of this, and I think this was just Lee misremembering the session. <laughs> yeah, it was! <laughs> they just thought it was Molly. <laughs> I didn't do anything! Tony doesn't yeah. give a shit about explosives. Basically. Or or this does not sound like a triangle. Basically, no, this is not a triangle. <laughs> Basically, Zaheer, Zaheer pissed off Basil by trying to rip them off for buying their grenades. Basil okay, got upset. Wait, 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 there was also 
Basil needed spare parts in the here had spare parts or Tony had spare parts. It was a here. Yes. Tony doesn't have Tony doesn't have anything. Tony has a sword. I Tony has her body. Nothing. You empty out so Tony's pockets. It's a phone, a sword, and a, like loose Tic Tacs. There's nothing there. Stop <laughs> assuming that Tony has things. No, no, but this is exactly the situation that happened. All of, all of this happened. Basil was pissed at Zaheer. A session went by, and when we came back, Z Lee assumed it was Tony, and Zaheer said yes to that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So all that basically <laughs> happened on the boat. <laughs> so, and then Tony was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, uh, so, after that, Noxie had called in for some backup, ca calling, calling, uh, ex-girlfriend, uh, space gang leader, and space gang leader called in some favors, and suddenly, when they were fighting off some more Sneepo on the beaches, Basically, these three mechs, Titanfall, dropped onto the beach and blasted all the Sneeple and saved them. Uh, that was Echo Squadron. This is uh, truly just a recap of how many people we fucked over. Oh, God, it is. <laughs> like, it's a big body count, guys. I keep remembering no that, regrets. man, I, I personally don't really fuck people over. <laughs> I I'm just collateral. You yeah. were associated with us, therefore... <laughs> Yeah. In, in on it. Oh, Tony yeah. fucks people over, but at least Tony doesn't commit war crimes. Yeah, okay, that one's on me. Okay, we'll get That's there, fine. we'll get there. Let's, let's <laughs> slow down. Oh, <laughs> uh, the war crimes have yet to come. <laughs> slow down. But, uh, yeah, so basically, this is Echo Squadron, which was, uh, I'll try and summarize them. Uh, it was, Elijah was the leader of the three. They're all three mech pilots. Elijah was the leader of the three. He was confident, soldier man, um, relatively generic, but he was a fun guy. Um, what was Eva? Name? Elijah. Uh, Elijah. Yeah. Oh, okay. How could you forget oh. him? Yeah. Oh no! I, 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 oh, I'm thinking of Carl. Was it Carl? Oh, but, uh, we'll get to Carl. Get to Carl. <laughs> uh, no, yes. we got. So then we had. Then we had uh, Eva, who more or less is just Zarya from Overwatch, but yeah, a mech pilot. And uh, there was multiple crushes on Eva throughout the time that you guys knew her. Uh, strong will break you for looking at her the wrong way. I will break you. And then there was Carl, who Carl was not originally intended to be this, but Carl was developed a quick reputation when in his very first fight, he hit zero targets. He missed every shot. And he was in a mech with a shotgun incredible how bad it can be. <laughs> so, Carl quickly developed a moniker of absolutely useless. But we loved him for it. He was great. Good, good guy. Good guy. Um, so, met them. They got them off the planet. And everyone went to what is Echo Squad's home base, which is the, which is the Centurion's the Centurions are are in a big carrier, big space carrier that roams the galaxy or roams the sector, and uh, is more or less a mechanized mercenary group. They're pretty cool. They're pretty neat. So they were hired to ferry the group over to said ex-girlfriend space gang of Noxia. Uh, let's see, what happened next? You guys hung out with we Echo did. Squad for a while on yeah. the ship. We went on one mission, which didn't amount to too much other than getting paid. Yeah, you guys, like, were, on along the way, you guys were asked to go loot a, uh, derelict ship that was just floating through space. Oh, wait, there is something oh, here that actually matters. That. I got a weird red crystal. Okay, let me explain that. So one of the things that we found on the ship is that I, Han, found a box, and it contained these three rubies, which I found out were really, really, like, pricey. And my mind was, I can pay off my entire debt with just two of these rubies. Three is, like, for sure. So, Basil walks up and says, give me one. And I say, <laughs> why? And Basil oh, yeah. says, Here, here's Elijah. Because I want one. <laughs> and I say, that's not a good reason. And we have this back and forth where Lee keeps trying to bullshit some things. 
and eventually says something along the lines of, I can use this to power a weapon or something, and I'm like, fuck it, fine, take a <laughs> ruby, which I gave you. Yes. Uh, this was just because Basil was an asshole. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much the most important- Oh, there was another thing. There was a, um, was it a grenade, Parker? Oh, what was it? I don't know. It was, a time it, was the, it was the gun. Well, no, there's a gun, but I was talking about the grenade that, like, made Zaheer just... Zaheer's first grenade? No, it, it like, froze time for him for, like, a fucking oh, the minute. Time yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That was weird. Yeah, there was, like, a... There was some fun loot on it. Basically, it was a ship that was uh, importing very, like, advanced artifact tech. Uh, and, yeah, it had a bunch of fun stuff on it, like the... The uh, essentially an EMP gun and a time grenade that kind of made a stasis zone. Those those things were fun. Zaheer, I think, set off a time grenade on himself. Yeah, that sounds correct. But yeah, that yeah. was that was mostly what happened on that ship. Nothing too crazy. Well, did no, we also have everyone made a party? mad when we left the gun somewhere? That'll come up later. <laughs> what did you say, Molly? Didn't we also have like a party where there was someone to blackmail photos? Oh yeah, no. Then you guys, yeah, when you guys were hanging out in the Centurion's ship, you were in. Was it you me? Were I feel like I was the blackmailer. <laughs> yeah, you were. It was you were bunking with you were bunking with Echo Squadron, and you were trying. It was it was like a bound of poker and stuff like that. And Noxia and Basil were in a flirting war with uh, Eva, and. Zaheer decided. Zaheer found out. Hey, Noxia has a. Uh, this uh, crazy uh, ex gang leader ex-girlfriend who is this powerful psychic, and then uh, decided, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna develop blackmail on drunk Noxia flirting with Eva just in case I need it." And then you did nothing with it ever again. Yep. Yeah. So that still also exists Tony on your phone, I guess. <laughs> Tony got what? <laughs> Tony fucked Elijah. <laughs> yep, Tony. That's an important I plot point. Yeah, Tony and Elijah. Had a thing? I don't know if you want to call it a thing, but it was a thing. <laughs> no, I think it was, because it kind of went on for a while, where they were just kind of like, you know, hanging out. Uh, but then, you know, <laughs> didn't end. It was a thing. It was didn't a thing. End. I remember in, like, fucking Space Chili, you guys were on a date. Yeah, and we did go to, like, <laughs> Basil had to, like, pretend to, like, to go on a date with Carl. Oh, we'll get there. We're <laughs> no, not there yet, yeah, guys. Don't worry. Right, we're not there. Slow down. We're fastly- we're fast approaching it, though. <laughs> Okay. That's the next one. So that brings us to planet number three, uh, which you're gonna have to scroll down for this one. Hold up, I got uh, something to reel in. Uh, good there old go. Eberron. And uh, Eberron asked for the Centurion's help, and it was on the way to de from delivering. Uh, it was on the way because the Centurions were delivering the party to the Dividers gang. Which was on and. Center. It's on Suna. So they were making a pick stop. And... Sorry, I was just reading chat. Uh... So the, the Centurion said, okay, you guys, you're still not freeloading. You're going to have to work. Uh, we have been hired by the mining company that is basically owns Eberron right now because Eberron is nothing but a rock pile. Um... Uh, but very profitable rock pile. And they they said, okay, these people have hired us, the, the rock the company here that owns this entire planet has hired us to help them with a monster problem. And it's uh then they were shown an image of this of said monster, which the image is kind of small in this window, but there it is. Uh, a giant, a bigger than a mountain giant fire wolf looking thing. Dog! With, with <laughs> dog, with like death tentacles coming off of its mane, and it's all, all, a lot of craziness to it. So the gang was like, all right, we got you. And then went down, and when they got to the, they, when they landed at the first city, they got out and Kai, what is the first thing you said needs to happen? I think we should hide from the police. <laughs> I would like anyone to take a wild guess as to why that's a stupid idea. <laughs> we might have been hired by the government. We were hired by the police and we said fuck the police. <laughs> hey, that's another oopsie. We don't trust cops! 
They weren't even cops, it was just the private military of the people that are running the mine. That means- Oh, that's even worse! They hired you! <laughs> this is- this is- okay, stream, th you have heard me talk about this before. This is the single most infuriating moment of my DMing career. <laughs> Gave us a plan and we said no. I like to think <laughs> that I've learned from this mistake. You have. Have you? I like to think I, I have. Kai, when we get to the five E round table, whenever that happens, you, you we will show that you did not. <laughs> Come on. I'm doing better. <sighs> Who wants to take I can't talk right now. Who wants to take this? Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to I take this? Okay. It up. So I can take over the range for a little bit. Uh, so, throughout this endeavor, we did a lot of stupid things, uh, including going into a warehouse where we tried to find them some clues. Not sure why the monster would be in a warehouse. Uh, Tony uh, found someone in, I think they were a theater, that was basically just a room with no lights and some fold-out chairs, and was named uh, Timmy. And we found we were going to have him be the person that we sort of room with while we're here. And he was incredibly depressed, talking monotone, oh. and was just the saddest <laughs> person. Yeah, it's pretty, cause, pretty sure it's because Molly went to, when you guys got to a bar, Molly said, I want to find the most, like, vulnerable guy here. Yes. I and, did do that? Yes. And then, you, and then you rolled for it, and you rolled really high. So I'm like, all right, here's this man who is, who depression is now ingrained in his DNA. And the funniest thing... In that entire planet that happened for me was when we asked, "What is your name short for anything? And I snarkily say, yeah, it's fucking for short for Timothy. And Parker, as Timmy, said, no, it's short for tumultuous. And I lost it. He was born into this life. I lost it at that <laughs> moment, just hearing Parker say that. Because I was like, what the fuck is tumultuous? Excellent day. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. I was laughing for like a half hour. <laughs> yeah, and then you guys got to his like shitty little apartment where he sleeps on like a mattress on the floor where there's no other furniture. And it was like, you, you guys were like, oh, you got any family? I was like, no, they all died in the mine. And then, and then you guys, and then you learned like, yeah, he's in a dead end job where he makes barely enough money to survive. And uh, I was like, hey, you asked to find the most depressed man in the bar. <laughs> Here he is. And then Tony, uh, as, as Tony does in Tony fashion, proceeded to uh, make his day maybe a little bit better. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, so yeah, we continue doing these things. And I can't remember how we found, got about it, but eventually Parker threw us enough fucking bones, both literally and figuratively, uh, to find out that we should head to a uh, mine to find some clues about this monster. So we did, and we get down into the mine, uh, and start exploring, and we find a room that we find out is just an elaborate game of Minesweeper. And then Sophie found out that she could teleport long distances, teleported, and found the exit. Instantly. First try. <laughs> that did happen. It, that did happen, that. didn't it? Instantly. I do remember that. I, do. I don't have the Minesweeper page anymore, unfortunately, otherwise I'd show it. You deleted it because you were upset. A little bit. <laughs> so we, so Sophie specifically, just completely uh, ruined the puzzle. You just, it was off of complete random luck as well. 100% bullshit. There was probably over 100 tiles, and Sophie picked the correct one. Nice. But yeah. It was like the second teleportation, you're like, this one? I was like, are you serious? But uh, we go down this, this uh, tunnel again and find this one room that has these... Well, first off, there's an empty spot that's, like, fiery. And there's another spot that I think is cold, and it has some uh, uh, petrified bestial body. Very small, nothing like the size of the thing we were sent here to... No, it was huge. It was well, giant. Relate, relatively compared to the thing you showed us here that's the size of a fucking mountains, it's small. No, it was the same size. Well, I thought it was tiny. No, it was not tiny. It was also gigantic. Okay, well, I didn't know that. But either way, I went to the fiery spot, and uh, Noxia went to the big bestial wolf thing, and she, well, she had a conversation, I think, with it. Did she at this point? Yes. It was like was it simultaneous? It was. It was simultaneous, but I yeah. addressed you first. Where basically this was a 
petrified what now you know they're called titans which are these giant world controlling world power ending uh well, fucking beings and uh, these these happen to just be uh large canines that had immense power of life and death and the one you talked to was the le- was the body and leftover spirit of this titan of life called aria and uh, it was a decent conversation. And Arya gave you their crystal tear, which was basically their son, who was pretty much yet to physically be born. Kai, <laughs> what happened to you, buddy? <laughs> so <laughs> the life dog was nice and cooperative, and the time. death dog was angry, to put it in soft terms and said, why are you there? Cut the connection, and then we heard fucking earthquakes as this thing was running directly at us. Yeah. So we proceeded to book it out of this cave and go back up the elevator, where we see this mountain-sized god of death staring at us with fire everywhere and people screaming in tears. So who wants... Who wants to explain this series of events, Parker, or because I'll do it. I'll come back. I'll, I'll, I'll know it. when I'll to get... jump in. I know exactly when to jump in. So uh, the, the, then the situation ar- uh, arises where. <laughs> so let me just explain the situation from what his name is Leof. Let me explain his situation. So basically, as the party has kind of figured out, the story here is that this planet was inhabited by this race, and this couple of these large canine beings. Leolf and Arya. Arya was a spirit of life, and because all the life had been essentially drained from the planet, and it was now just a giant rock that is a mining operation, Leolf blamed the, the humans for Arya's death. And so Leolf was just pissed as hell, and literally running anywhere and everywhere to kill anything. Because he is a being of destruction and death. Uh, then he got there and was like, uh, and then, then, yeah, then he got there and the party just came out of Arya's grave and he was like, "Uh uh-huh, give me a reason not to kill you. And then, and then, uh, he picked up, he literally picked up Han in one of the shadow tendril things. And I was just holding him like 20 stories in the air. Um sucking the life out of him, and then the rest of the group was like, I think it was was it Noxia that said we can serve you to yes. try and talk yes. your way out? Yes, it was me. It was me. I initiated it, this. And so he said then, he basically said, do it. And, uh... <laughs> and I executed Order 66. And, and so then, the three people in the party, um... Uh-huh. Because, by the way, Basil was still back at the city. <laughs> Basil had missed this session. Yeah, uh, and so what happened next was uh, all all the mining workers that were running out of the mines nearby, uh, he said, yeah, kill them. Show me. And so, <laughs> Noxians are here. Wonton destruction ensued. <laughs> Tony Liberal was... slaughter. Oh, Actual murder. I don't think I here was. The here had fun. The I would like to add... Murdered. That Tony was also like, okay, and started whipping around her sword, but was so bad that hit anything. Tony was willing to kill, was not physically capable of it. These untrained civilians dodged your sword swings. Correct. Did we talk so, about the grenade down the mine shaft nope, at the yes. beginning that's of this? Nope, really? That's I that, 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 was, that one's on me. And I will say, completely of her own free will, <laughs> I gave no hint of this. Sophie said, I'm going to drop a grenade down the mine and close it. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. That was the point that Leof was like, damn, this one's on. <laughs> this is this, this, this raw. Loyalty to the dog, and I fucking did. <laughs> so, mind you, hundreds of these mine workers were still at the bottom of the shaft, and Zaheer just caved it in. Zaheer, yep. Okay. I'm trying to draw it. I'm laughing. I'm fucking up the lines. So, <laughs> no. Well, I'm about to say something else because this is where I can take the reins because I have to tell this part of the story. Yep. So, go for it. While in the grasp of Leon, I still have my hands free, and I use my phone to call Basil, 
Lee had come back at this point. And I said, Dear God, the mountainous do go dog god of death has me, save me, help. So Lee proceeds to go and find the city that we were in, because these are giant moving cities. They have, like, treads and wheels so that they can avoid this thing. So they go into the engine room and basically get past all the guards and hack the engines and turn it towards the god dog. Well, there. Basil didn't get past them. Basil took them hostage. Yeah. <laughs> And pointed it right at the god dog, Death of Leolf, and went full speed ahead. Yeah, so Kai, basically from your point of view, you just saw over the horizon a city come into view and just charge at you. Full speed, and I was just thinking, this is worse, because he's still holding me! I'm still in this thing's grasp, and it turns, Leolf turns to the city, and just starts charging. And I go... Fuck! <laughs> so, I proceed to say, Hey, maybe you should uh, l let me down before you charge a thing, because uh, you don't want to kill me, right? I'm with everyone else here. And I proceed to basically roll a natural 20 on persuasion. And Parker doesn't let me go that easily, though, because that was a really half-assed excuse. And Leolf just drops me from said 20 stories high grasp and has me roll a evasive save or whatever just to not break my ankles and die on impact. I proceed to roll a second nat 20, trying on that roll too. And I gracefully land on the ground, run over to everyone and say, we have to go. You, uh, yeah, you, you pulled some acrobatic shenanigans and uh, you escaped the jaws of death. The jaws of death were very, very literal. How do you feel that Han went through this and fucking just defied all odds? No, we'll get there. We'll get there. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. I'm just saying that. And the then you did what you did. Han actually went out. Goddamn. That should have been it. No. I had my one day. I had my save. But yeah, someone else so, want to tell what happened made it after. through the session. Yeah, so does anyone else have any thoughts they want to share on this whole situation before I move on? Because boy, was it a big situation. I think I've like just gotten my, uh, one of my true AI powers where I could like... Defeat security. Basically control any machine. Yeah, no, it, it was control any machine. Like it was... I don't know what it's focus. called. Yeah, split, split focus. focus. And I could control every terminal, like, in the engine room. And I was very excited to do that. And then I used it for destruction. Yeah, yeah, so, the house has castle the shit into the... <laughs> I want to point out that, as you might expect, Leolf absolutely decimated the city. Skyrocketing <laughs> Basil's kill count beyond anything <laughs> that any of us could to put together could Not ever shaft. could oh. ever possibly <laughs> surpass Lee Sophie we thought you had it with the mine shaft massacre I know. Lee <laughs> thought you had it has the undefeated and undefeatable record for biggest war crime ever You Just... say undefeatable but that sounds like a challenge I I <laughs> challenge you to that. somehow no, beat that no, 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 Wait 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 no, 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 no. Did... Wait technically Zaheer how does oh, he know? We'll get the prison <gasps> job. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Zaheer did ignore the crime. Okay, that's not directly a war crime, though. That's yeah, just, that's just being stupid. A yeah, that's, that's just being an asshole. That's yeah. not, no, that's what not Basil not did was directly right. a crime. Right. So. <laughs> Basil is the biggest biggest war crime that leads to what, the second highest kill count. The highest kill count is Zaheer's planet. <laughs> yeah. And but it still, was technically Zaheer's fault. That was yep. indirect, okay. though. I, that was, well, well, they were already dying, and then Zaheer just yeah. didn't help. L Basil yeah, threw line. people at this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Zaheer, Zaheer held... <laughs> Zaheer held their fate in his grasp and just forgot and or didn't care. Basil, That's how I summarize Zaheer. Yeah, Basil pushed I them Zaheer's off the cliff. 
those still those still count towards Zahir's body count in a sense, but Basil has the biggest war crime by far. Yeah. Does anybody else know though? Uh, Does anybody? Uh, well, okay. you know what, Basil? Well, no, we'll get there. You want? Know you want know Lee? No, you never told anyone. In character, no one knows. Well, not, the only no one who had a suspicion crime, was Han. Out. Han definitely yeah. knew. Yeah, so the only one who had a suspicion was Han. Yeah, gotta, gotta get rid of the witnesses. <laughs> so anyways, what happened after this event, Parker? Okay, so the, the city is screaming. is like it's charging full steam ahead at this literal meteor of destruction running at it full speed. And so Basil grabs a, grabs a big like ATV truck, yeets, and goes and picks up their friends. And so everyone. Gave the dog a big snack. Uh, no. it, yeah. And and then then Basil went and picked up their friends, and then you all went to like this very small like supply outpost for the mining camps, way off in the distance. And you're you're you guys are just there, and there's just a session where everyone's taking in what just happened. I think I was like having a, having an anxiety attack in the corner. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that definitely happened. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a lot. There was a lot that happened. Planet number three, we fucked up and destroyed, and <laughs> completely deviated from anything Parker put before us. Yep. Yep. So I want to remind everyone that so far, what's happened is they were hired to come get rid of this monster, and they started serving it. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. But anyway, oh yeah, and also I forgot to mention one thing. Through this, I now have a connection to the elf. Yeah. Ever since you touched the mark down there in the cave, you have a connection to the elf. Uh, I have a question. Um, I'm uh -huh. not sure when it pops up, but uh, watchers, is that later? Or That's in that... this, soon. In this? Okay. Uh, soon, yeah. So Han's the one that so, finds them first. So basically, you guys move off to a, uh, a different city to kind of just hide and just pretend nothing's happening, nothing wrong, It's fine. everything's fine. Um... And you go, you go, to, you go there, and you guys are trying to figure out what to do. And Morgan's at this point, Morgan's boyfriend had joined and made a character for a little bit, and Venny, who was just a a a, a turtle race, uh, who was basically a, a battle turtle. Um, he made sci-fi. So he was also a nerd. Yeah. And and uh, so I believe it was Han and Venny that went perusing around the city, and then this just. Kai, you explain the situation because I actually don't remember this one great. I think this, this one's was a little during... foggy. Okay, this. this I whole think thing I had was... a stroke after the previous session, so I don't remember a lot. Okay, so I can I can summarize it because it's hard to pinpoint because it was so long ago what specifically happened. But and we ended up sort of finding out that the uh, Centurions had sent down Echo Squadron to check up on what the fuck's happening, and we were like, fuck because we were on camera basically doing these war crimes, as in uh -huh. uh, Noxia and uh, Zaheer and Oops. Tony. So throughout a series of events, we had formed a plan to uh, <laughs> assassinate the head of the company because Noxia had gotten a job to do that from <laughs> the Viders, a.k.a. A a uh, her ex-girlfriend. And that would get us off the planet. And we had to avoid Echo Squadron, so half of us that weren't accused of war crimes were going to distract them, and half us that were were going to help with this assassination. And I want to point out. I want to point out that this uh, offered contract to assassinate the head of the mining company was supposed to be a kind of uh, strenuous situation because you guys were supposed to have, you know, talked to him and communicated with the mining company as a whole, but you didn't, so you guys were like, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. And during this series of events is when Han and Vinny had encountered in an alley a man in a hooded figure who proceeded to fuck us up. <laughs> With, without even touching you. <laughs> without even touching us. Uh, there's, and... a, there's psychic powers in this universe, so just to clarify. Yes. There are psionic powers, and this guy... Was Immediately, strong. Han and Vanny saw that, like, okay, this psychic power is on a different level than our friends. Yeah. So he basically told us that the tier that we had, that uh, Noxia had, 
he was gonna try and get it, but we convinced him that we would keep it for a little bit as long as we kept it safe. And that was the deal so that he didn't fucking just kick our ass. Uh, and he eventually, he went away for a little bit, but he was always watching, i.e. the name. He's watching us for a while. He was the watch. He was known as the Watcher for a while to you guys. Yeah, but we told everyone about that, and that was scary. Uh, and then you swiftly moved on. <laughs> well, it, I don't know what we do about that because he could just come over and kill us all. Well, it was also there was a funny situation where you guys were like, where where you were like, uh, out of character before the next session. You were like, okay, the Watcher can read our thoughts. But I don't think anyone really remembers right. what's happening. I remember. So, okay, basically wait. every time he thought about the Watcher, that's how he tracked you. Let me okay. Let me actually make this clear. I knew this in the session because you you reminded me. I remember knowing this. And I was thinking we can do all these plans, but if we even talk about him, he'll know. So my plan was. It's, it's like Voldemort. If you say his name, if you speak about him, he knows where you are. So I had told everyone. Yes. Yes. So I had told everyone about our plan to assassinate the head and about the the uh, centurions and everything, but I consciously said, thought to myself, I will not talk about the Watcher, because that means we'll have thought about him and he'll know. So I left it out. And then Molly said, so what about the Watcher? And I went, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was leaving that out on purpose. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it was really funny. It was a great moment. <laughs> it, was, it was a good one. So yeah. Uh, but then we proceeded with our plan. So Parker, what was the plan for assassination? Oh wait, okay. didn't we also do TGI Space Fridays? That's part That's of what the, the plan. plan. That's part of the plan. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. So you guys uh, had two teams, or basically the ones who were wanted for <laughs> team war criminals. Team war criminals. Team war criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Which was wait no team war criminals was fine because they didn't know you had committed war crimes up to this point. Literally, all the plan was was for Noxia to go set up somewhere to assassinate the mining My CEO. Oh god! Yeah, use the sniping thing that you have, and the rest for of the, the first time. for the first time the, the the job of the rest of the group. I don't know where Han was during this. Actually. I was with the no, I was with everyone at TGIs. Okay, so the rest of the uh, the job of the rest of the group was just to distract Echo Squadron because they cannot know. The group was also still on good terms with Echo Squadron at this point. Oh, can I point out we also tried to have one last attempt to flirt with Eva, which went nowhere. <laughs> it went yeah, absolutely nowhere. Just just throwing that out there. There was multiple attempts and it resulted in nothing. I think I had Noxia break my arm so that Eva would fix it. That's correct. You did do that. What is yeah. wrong with you? Yeah, you guys are all a little too horny on me for lesbian. <laughs> you, so horny, we broke an arm. You, I, I still like the logic behind that because Eva has displayed no capability to repair a robot arm. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I think I think we also needed to distract Eva. Oh look, I well, closed the windows that are on the freaking screen at some point. You They've been up so fucking smart. No, it was not not smart. That, let me let's be clear. You flirting with them and breaking your arm had nothing to do with the plan. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> you just yeah, wanted to do that. So then there was so then the plan. Ultimately the plan was Every so uh Tony Zahir uh Tony and Zahir were there to convince Elijah that everything's fine. Let's just hang out. Everything's going according to plan. Just, let's just chill. And they said, "Hey, let's go on a double date." Because Tony still had a thing with Elijah, and then, and then, so here went on a double date with him with Carl. <laughs> I'm, I'm now having this all come back. To me. What happened that session was a mistake. And everything because you I said should be disregarded. Like, no, I'm going to reveal it because you then had a text with, like, an in character text conversation with Tony uh, oh, asking, I Do I have to put out? Do and, I and then, you, and then and Tony said, Do you want to? And then you said, I don't know. And then, and then Tony basically asked, Well, what do you got going on down there? And then you said, And then you try to convince Tony that you're a Kendall and have nothing. 
Which was <laughs> true and true and correct. <laughs> so here is not a Ken doll. <laughs> oh my god. You don't know that! We this do! Not, this, no, how do you know? Because hey, Sophie, you have I a sister and a father. <laughs> hey Sophie, I, I, ha I have more custody over here than you do. I made more of him. <laughs> Hard pass, bud. And then, uh, you as so that happened. I do also remember, uh, Tony being a real asshole about ordering food. Um, yeah, yeah. I I remember. Uh, I don't know. We were gonna order appetizers, and Elijah was like, "Oh, we should order nachos." And then Tony was like, oh, I don't like chips, and I don't like cheese. And then the nachos came, and Tony started eating them. And Elijah was like, what the fuck? And Tony said, I love nachos. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, causing problems. I don't know how he didn't break up with me over that, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, to be fair, at that point he was still like, are we together or not? Uh, so how did the assassination know. go, Parker? So, so, so they they took them to. Okay, by the way, in our in our off-screen games, I am hilariously uncreative with naming things like restaurants. So they said, w "Is there anything like a TGI Fridays that we can go to?" And I said, "There's a space TGI Fridays over there," and that proceeds to be a theme of Space McDonald's, Space Bucks, Spaces, Space TGI Fridays. There's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I believe there was a point where there was a Macy's that was turned to Spacey's. Well, I thought it was yeah! Wendy's with Spacey's. We went to Spacey's! Oh, okay. Um... So yeah, that that happens a lot. But we'll ignore that. It's unimportant. So you went there. Yeah, you know, TGI Fridays has got the TVs and stuff, and uh, you guys were hanging out. And so, well, and then... Noxia went to set up on the roof across from the building where he, where this CEO was preparing to give a live broadcast speech. Let's all remember that. He was preparing to give a live broadcast speech. Um, and so when, when Noxia was up there getting ready, someone attacked her. His masked, uh, masked figure, the only thing that she got to change is that this was probably a female. Yeah. Yeah. They proceeded to fight for a hot minute before Noxia took, like, broke the helmet and revealed it was Christine. I got winter soldiered. You, you did. And as soon as that happened, Christine basically uh, escaped. Just got out of there as quickly as possible. And then you came back, lined up the shot, took it, and he was in the middle of the broadcast. So while everyone was heading at Space TTI Fridays, uh, they were on the TVs. <laughs> So Elijah, head of Echo Squadron, who's like, I should be here doing my job, but uh, these guys are fine. They're friends. They've convinced me that everything's okay. Okay. Hey, there's the guy who hired them. Oh, his head just got blown off on live TV. Okay. Oh, no. One of their friends is missing. Okay. Coincidence? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It happens to be the one who's a good sniper. Yeah, their sniper assassin happens to be missing. This is a problem. So, yeah. I, I can... I remember at this point... Um, Zaheer... And Basil. No, not Basil. Mm -hmm. It was Zaheer, Noxia, and someone else went with Noxia when she had uh, another escape vehicle from her ex girlfriend arrive. I don't. Who, who went with Noxia? It was a bod. It was a, yeah, I know it was bod, but it was. There's there six of us. I know Molly and Basil with me, so Zaheer. I guess it was it those was, two. It was. Uh, Vinny, was it Benny? Didn't, Benny yeah, it was us. Benny. It was Venny. Oh, it was, was no, Venny went with Noxia and Zaheer, I believe. Okay. But yeah, so those three went on their own, and Han and um, Basil, Han and, and, Basil and Tony went with Echo Squadron because they were like, you're not leaving. We're, we're taking you back. So he said, okay. This, this is, this this is officially sense. a court martial at this point. Like, I can't argue with this. There's, there's nothing I can BS my way out of this, so I'm, I'm going with them. Uh, but Zaheer got out because he can teleport because he said, fuck this. Thank you. Um, yeah, there, there was literally a point where he... Yeah, so you just never said, came back. Yeah, you you just never came out. back. No, you, you guys You just left. never came back. Yeah. So... Was it for people who can't teleport? We then split the group. Uh, Team Noxia just went was going straight to the ex-girlfriend Divide. dividers. Yeah. 
and our group went up to the Centurions, and we talked to the, to the leader of the Centurions, and had this whole court monster thing. I may so basically, Tony managed to convince them that they were so useless looking at the video of them swinging a sword around that they did no crimes, which was true. <laughs> so they yeah. were completely innocent. I would also like to say, Tony is a great lawyer and did a great job. Basil really wasn't job. there during any of the war crime, and yeah, no one Basil's... saw Basil throw a city at Han. No, no one saw the biggest <laughs> war crime. No one saw the biggest one. And Han uh, convinced them that he was just captured. And he also pointed out that two of the people that left were psionics, which were because Zaheer and Noxia have psychic powers. So that was his like thing saying, Maybe they did all this because the monster could control psychic people. That was his excuse. That he was he had no part of it, and it was only the psychic people doing it. So they believed it, because thank God he managed to skirt pi past this horrendous footage, but had to make the deal that he would go and either capture or kill Noxia and Zaheer and, and bring them back. And he said, okay. Now let me point out, I am not one to do PvP. I would not. And in my mind was saying, I'll just fake my death or something or just lie. I'm just trying to leave. So we left. He also, he also gave you the incentive that he could clear your debt. Yes. That I should do this both to absolve the possibility of war crime and also to clear my debt. We then proceed to head to the dividers to meet up with them. Ahead of time, we already had part of a session where Noxia had talked to their ex-girlfriend, and they were all like good with the dividers, and everything was okay. Everyone knew their Noxia there, by the way. She was very well known. Yeah. So, and, and Echo Squadron had also important note. Echo Squadron had snuck onto your guys' ship when you were going out to do this job yes. because they wanted to help you. Yep. So we had. Uh, they had done that, and by the way, Noxia's ex-girlfriend, as we found out by this session now, because we only knew her by the leader of the Dividers, was an incredibly powerful psionic, able to basically melt brains. Specifically a telepath. Yes. So, I will now proceed to describe how my half of the group arrived. Our ship landed, we sat down, and then Basil instantly said, I call Noxia and rat Han out. <laughs> I am not joking when I say it was the first thing that happened when but, we landed. When, by rat Han out, he also means that 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 uh, Basil basically texted them, "Han's here to kill you." Yes. Yeah, and so by saying for putting saying that my life is now in danger, of course I tell the person who runs the place. Yeah. The super powerful person who runs the whole place. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. No, I, I've I, still I, got to explain. Not We're not done with the story. No. Lee, yeah, the evidence has not been... No, the evidence has no, not been... No, Lee, stop. How it's worse. No, wait, no for wait. wait for your defense. Wait. Wait for your defense. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so, we then proceed to meet up as obviously several armed guards show up and uh, capture us, as they Eventually would. They arrest... You, they arrest... Now, here's the thing. Uh, they didn't arrest Basil because Basil was the rat, and they just arrested. And then he just like then he fucked off. He, he was gone. Uh, they arrested Han yeah, and Echo. They, Han and the Echo Squadron. They arrested Han and the Echo now, Squadron. So we got taken over over to there. We all met up. Um, and then I died. I had my brain melted because Basil rat me out for saying that I would try to kill Noxia next to Noxia's crazy ex-girlfriend who ran the entire fucking mafia here. Yep. Okay, good. She, she looked at you and your your brain was a swirly. You guys, and then they looted my body. Brain melted. And then and they then, looted my then, body. And then, they loot, then the party looted your body. Yeah, I did want to <laughs> find some good shit off of you. Wasn't that attached. Yep. Sorry, Han. Uh, so, uh, thank you for uh, sending the meme. Hi, if you'd like to throw that one up there. Oh, it's a cla <laughs> It's the best Hold meme that has come out. I, just got I also actually we missed one thing, and that we got another uh, tier. Yeah. That's right, because uh, 
That's right. Sorry. Sorry. Backtracking a little bit. Also so at mean. the end of the whole Eberron thing, Leolf Leolf trust basically had developed a relationship with Han in terms of trusting him as a fatherly figure because Leolf is also a father figure looking for someone to protect his daughter. And then Leolf entrusted Han with this red star that's kind of the sister to Arya's tear. One has Leolf's daughter in it, one has Arya's son in it. So they looted that off Han's court. Yeah. And now so, I have uh, two dogs. By the so, way, you guys never looted the rubies. Those are gone. Now the rubies are gone. Yay! Uh, so, so uh, Lee. So Lee, you may now put forth your defense. Oh, it is not an offense. It is something that is going to make it worse. Because I very distinctly remember how this went down. We were at the session where we were like, okay, we're going to go kill Noxia and Zaheer. And Basil was like, is Han really going to kill Noxia and Zaheer? Because I'm going to fucking rat Han out if he does. And I told Kai, Basil's going to rat you out unless you let them in on your plan. And did I told you? him that for the week. I did. I don't believe this is true. You know, multiple times I was like, if... if if Han doesn't say anything to Basil, Basil's gonna rot him out. I don't and think I this is late. true. I was late to the session. You almost made it through it, and I arrived in the session, texted Noxia, and then you died. Considering I never had plans to kill Noxia. Wait, I didn't know that. I swear to God, the tell what. I don't think that's. <laughs> I'm but gonna I... say it might have happened, but I'm also gonna say Lee forgot to send me half their backstory in 5e. This is fair. This is fair. Maybe I just told Molly and Sophie. <laughs> I think that sounds correct because uh, I remember you saying this. I remember you saying this, but I feel like I remember what you said was, I'm going to tell Kai this. And maybe you just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember you being like, oh, I'm going to tell Kai next time before we start, like, that I, I'm going to yeah, run him out. So if Molly's saying, I'm going to tell Kai before we start, and then you were late, something tells me something yeah. came up and you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is I did know that, like, I do remember you saying this to me. Yeah, I also remember this, so you definitely didn't tell Kai, you just told us. I think you did just tell me and Sophie. You have been found guilty of murder? Yes. So not only does Lee have the highest NPC kill count intentionally, Lee has the highest player kill count. Tried to kill Han three times. <laughs> Succeeded eventually. <laughs> Got there one day. So, uh... So that happened, and uh, Han was carted away, never to be seen again. And the meme will now go away. And uh, that meme broke me that day when that happened. Because I remember <laughs> everyone's just like, why? This is Lee's fault. <laughs> this isn't Nash. I don't blame Nash. I don't blame Morgan, because Morgan got told this person's going to kill you and said, hey, this person's going to kill me. That's a normal response. It was self-defense. It was self-defense. <laughs> I just sicked my attack girlfriend. <laughs> there is no hard feelings in my way towards Morgan at all. But there is hard feelings towards Lee. Han is dead. Lay on the other hand. Han is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that was how Han went out. Like a buster. <laughs> Stabbed <laughs> in the back. Survived a city. I could survive a titan of death. Here's the thing, couldn't roll my way out of that one. I had you roll. You did not succeed. That's a hard roll. You you rolled it you rolled a mental defense. It was bad. Let's be honest, Han does not have much defense since he is a frail old man. But yeah. So You guys went through of like I'm gonna be honest, moving past Han's death relatively quickly, and I was like, yeah, damn, guys, this is a cold room <laughs> right very now. Very cold. This is a cold room <laughs> right now. <laughs> this is a cold ass room. By the way, I think we're I think we are up to date with the this time on. I think that is the first, one of the first times that we had a this time on. Yeah. Yeah, March twentieth, twenty nineteen. God, this session's been going a while. Oh, uh -huh. uh, so, 
that happened. So you guys were assigned bunks. Nash, the leader of the dividers. Oh, wait. Uh, there's art for Nash. It's rather popular art on Pinterest, so someone will probably recognize it, I'm sure. Um, and she, and uh, she basically said, Noxie, I really can't be seen with you because you still have a shit-ass reputation around here, and I'm still trying to maintain the whole leadership thing. Um, but I love you. Here's a bunk room. And that's basically what happened. You, everyone bunked in there, and then you guys learned that you were also bunking with a man uh, who cough, was Kai's my second new character. Cough. Uh, hey, Kai. So, hey, Kai. Who is your, who is your second character? So, I would love for I would love for you to read the actual intro. I, <laughs> I'll pass on that. Uh, I made. I decided to read the actual intro then. <laughs> You ready? Yeah, you, you, you want to go for you it. You gonna let me do it? Sure, if you want. Yeah, you were so confident to do it the first time. I was yeah, surprised no. you won't do it now. Nah, mm -hmm. it's okay. All right, so Kai wrote out this intro, and it's the only thing on his bio page, and it's fucking if hilarious. I don't use a hear's voice. I feel like you have to read this fucking intro. That's true. Yeah, okay. That's true. Oh. Yeah. Give it. Come on, give it. Give <laughs> it right, the beans. Yeah. Okay, the fish got away, so I, I can't do that. The name is Lightning Lexus, the noble wanderer of the wild, third son of the Hohenheim family, the handsome and mysterious rogue, the infamous adventurer extraordinaire, and this is my beloved mascot, Oolong, the teacup pig, whose adorableness knows no bounds. All those who oppose me shall fear my wrath and know my name, Lightning Lexus, bringer of destruction. And that's how he introduced himself. That's me. So, so who's your new character, Kai? Right? <laughs> Everyone likes Oolong. Yeah, I care about Oolong. We love him. Yeah, I have a teacup pig. It's my mascot. But yeah, I made... So I said, okay, I went with frail old man, so I'm gonna go, like, the opposite of just dumbass uh, martial artist. He is... Okay, I'm, we'll get to there later. <laughs> we'll get there later. Stop. So, uh, he's basically a... Uh, he does lots of kicks, which I... Obviously, like, I hadn't met <laughs> the guy... Uh, uh, the uh, Russian man who punches, I never met him, so this was just uh, coincidental. And also, somehow managed to do the exact same backstory as Zahir, just with more tech. Without so even Sophie knowing even know. Zahir's backstory. Hey, Sophie didn't even know Zahir's backstory at yeah. this point. <laughs> and somehow, I managed to do both of those. Don't know how. But this guy has um, basically a nanotech glove that can become any weapon, and cybernetic legs. And he does martial arts. Uh, and he has a teacup pig. So, yep. that that was the man that I have made. He is my current character. Don't worry, hasn't died yet. <laughs> He's hanging up by his foot, though. Um, also, I'll point out, as Morgan said, so I decided, okay, I want to get a defense skill. Uh, there's what everyone else and their mother got, which is called Die Hard, where you just get more health. To take Die Hard or Iron. No, That's I crazy. took Ironhide because I said I'd rather just not take damage than be a health sponge because everyone else is a health sponge. Literally. What do you mean refuse to do it? It's just a feat. Why don't you do it? You have it. I took it. You gotta take it too. No, I. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna make you learn your lesson. I'm gonna make learn my learn lesson. You can. Mm, we'll you. get there. We'll get there. Parker, take over before I yell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it's getting heated in here. Thank you to all, to all the viewers who are watching tonight. There's a decent amount of you guys today, and I'm shocked that people have stayed this long for this. Uh, but, I'm just gonna say, so you guys got to. Oh my god. At this point, Noxia uh, and the rest of the group had met what is the governing body of the dividers. And the Dividers are essentially a mercenary, a, a mercenary mafia-like group that operates out of a an cloaked space station. Um, uh, and they're pretty like interesting. Uh, they're like the Centurions. The Centurions were on the flip side of the law, so they are to the Centurions as like robbers are to cops, essentially. Um, so what what they do is they have a 
council that is run by psionics. Each psionic is specialized in a different kind of psionic power. There was one new one that Noxia did not recognize, who was very recent in his leadership. And uh, he proceeded to antagonize Noxia a lot. And he is a metascion, which a metascion is specifically good at disabling other scions. And so he's, you can't read him with psionics. You can't really teleport in the space around him. And there's some other nasty toys that I won't reveal because that's still relevant. I hate this dude. And uh, he put Noxia on trial for her crimes against the Dividers previously. And Noxia chose trial by combat because I think the other option was execution or something. <laughs> it was not great. <laughs> It would basically he backed you into a corner. Of, he basically backed Noxie into a corner of fight for your life. Yep. Lexus helped. And uh, and yeah, Lexis uh, Lexus jumped in to help. And there was this uh, arena brought up in which Noxia and Lexus got out by the skin of their teeth, I beating to death. beating this guy, beating uh, Emix's kill squad. My name was Emix. It was the first of many near death experiences for Lexus. And for a, another one of me, just another near-death experience, as I experience frequently with this group. <laughs> so then you, uh, then you got out of that. Enix's current plan was foiled, so everything was fine there. And this is the point where it gets a little convoluted, so I need some help on how the order of okay. things. That no, I know what happened next. Okay. So the famed. Dynamic duo of Tony and Lexus was born this day. Ooh. I'll also point oh, yes. out, I had a friend on the station named Chuck, and he was a fish. You did have oh. a fish man and who drove the ship. He was ship. my favorite NPC because Parker didn't voice him. He just made fish noises, and I acted like I knew what he was saying. And I was the only one that knew what he was saying. So, everyone else couldn't make the session. Molly and Kai were literally the only two that could make the session that day. And so when I said, all right, I'm just going to make up kind of a throwaway mission that these two can go do just for fun. And it went off pretty much without a hitch. All they had to do was go either collect payment from a guy or intimidate him or collect information. And that was pretty much the mission. You guys. So Molly, do you remember how it went? I remember that we, we showed up mm -hmm. on the planet and uh you know talk to the person that we were supposed to do i don't remember a lot of details i remember we witnessed someone getting like captured by the police oh they got shot by the police or he got shot by the police yeah he got killed yep. and we he dropped something so we took that and that ends up being important and then i think the rest of the mission we just kind of like did everything we were told like we met up with the people we were supposed to meet up with we did everything they asked us to do Everything went fine. We didn't even get caught taking the thing from the guy we, that got shot. We didn't even get caught taking the thing that the guy dropped. And when we got back and told everyone, like, oh, yeah, it went really well. We did, like, see a guy get, like, killed. And everyone assumed, oh, you killed a guy? We had nothing to do with that. We were pissed because everyone just kept saying, so you fucked up a mission. We were like, no, we just saw this happen. Off in the distance. It just happened. We had nothing to do with it. And they kept ragging on us. Death follows you. That's what it is. I don't think we're responsible for police <laughs> brutality on some planet we went to <laughs> one time. So yeah. Team Lexus and Tony is the best part of the team and no one believes it. We had like no prop. Like genuinely, we... we were a great duo because I was really good at talking to people and you were like very good at like figuring everything out. So like, we just very easily and like quickly got the mission done. And then everyone said, but a guy died. So that's not a successful mission. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't our fucking fault. And, it and had we got nothing. the thing and guess what? That turned out to be important. And it had nothing to do with the mission too. So still a successful mission. <laughs> Yeah, it had nothing to do with what we were doing. So then, uh, so then you got back. So filler episode done, <gasps> succeeded. Did you get it? Oh, did it just happen? It got. It happened. It God, happened. it only took you two hours. Two right, pause. hours. <laughs> pause. Pause.
What? Isn't that shiny? No. Shiny is uh, pink. It, it just looks weird oh. as fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It doesn't. It's usually purple. That looks green. Yeah. yeah it's more purple. Uh, Molly. Molly Kai got his uh, feet best that he's been searching for this entire time that we've been talking. He's That's a. Yeah. What? Ew. He he was after a hard to get Pokemon that's really hard to find, and that's why we're doing this in the first place is to have something interesting happening while he's doing that in the background for his stream, and he got the thing. Oh. Cool. But we're that's gonna fi we're gonna we're gonna finish the roundtable anyways. Yeah, I don't know how to watch Twitch. That's uh, fine. <laughs> I don't I'll... even. Do I have to have an account? Uh, no. I don't think. No, you don't. So. How do I watch it? Because Go to click that link that's, that Lee just put in general. I love that Bali is on Twitch, doesn't even know... I barely know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, you're a star. This is the fish uh, Pokemon. I don't think I'm a star. Yeah, I'm the star. Cool okay. no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though... <laughs> Maybe. Hate to say. Should I just change this to a, a let's chat stream? Because there's no way after two hours I'm going to start catching the fucking veggies. Wait, is yeah, there no. comments? Yeah, no, there's people in chat. Yeah. Where? <laughs> On the right. <laughs> hi, chat. <laughs> Say hi to Molly, chat. Show her you're here. I don't know where it is. Oh, is it the red thing? I'm streaming for you, Molly. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm in it, I think. I just can't. I think you, I think you might have it full screen. Like. Yeah, take it off the of full screen. And look to the right. Oh. I found it. <laughs> oh my god. Well, there was a thing in the full screen that said live chat. Yeah, that, that's my it, UI. Yeah, that's, his, that's Kai's UI so that the live chat shows up when he posts it on YouTube. Oh. That's all that is. Okay, well... <laughs> sorry I don't know about all your nerd shit. Alright. <laughs> I figured it out. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Right, let me just change this to a, a let's chat. Yeah, just change it. Just change it up. We'll keep. Okay, so where was I? Uh, all this right. Is just after the the mission. Yeah. So all that happens. There's some mess around in the divider space for a while, meeting some interesting characters. Uh, you guys. Who did you guys? You guys. You did form a cult. You did put out. You asked me that if you could put out flyers for your cult, and I said yes. And based off the role you gave, you had two people who showed up. You had the lonely janitor, and you had a robot who didn't really know where he was, but who was an assassin. Uh-huh. Yep. And then you've kept that robot around forever because he regards you as his god. Perfect. I forgot that happened. Yeah, so sure. We also had uh, another visit from our watcher friend. Was that at this point, or was that later? I think that comes after a few of these things. So, okay. you also met the triplets, who you described as space, edgy Powerpuff Girls. Um, yeah, just three three chicks who are pretty good at killing people, but are also good at partying. Um, then there was a. Uh, I think Molly fucked a frog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. Molly fucked, fucked a frog. Also, I got paid, though. Thing up on screen, we have uh, memes in the this time on. Lovely. Yes. If you he want paid the money, though. Screen. Here's the thing. I didn't know how much money Noxia had until right now, so now I'm a little sad, because I used to think that I had a lot of money, because... I used to get paid pretty well when I would just, like, hook up with the random guys. Molly, I'm not proud of my money anymore. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's led to some issues. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Alright, is there any music I, that we hate to on? Uh, just to... Are the steeple after you? We'll get to that, Molly. Don't worry. I'll, uh... help, I'll help you put two and two together with that one, because I helped a lot of people put two yeah. and two together with that recently. Um, yeah. So, what happened next... Was so you guys hung out some stuff with that? You did another mission as a group. You did a mission for the dividers again, which was going to this one also went off fairly well. You went to a planet that was not quite of the tech level to have space like inter interplanetary travel. So the general rule of the governing bodies around this sector is 
if a race has not achieved that level of technology, you do not interact with them. You let them get there on their own. Otherwise, the development of that species can get fucked bad. So their mission, that there was this crazy cult that w that is all about sharing this technology with literally every sentient being that exists. Sharing, sharing the highest technology with literally every sentient being. And so they went there and uh, this cult was going to show these, uh, it, was, it was just called the Sapiens. They were basically monkey people. <laughs> um, it was going to show them the technology and our party was said, hey, you got to go stop them. Stop it. Just just make sure this doesn't break out into chaos. Um, and you guys went, you took down the cultist who was there, you got some cool tech treasure from him, and then <laughs> and then, then Smill Whiff was born. Smill Whiff! <laughs> because a sapien boy saw the fight and Tony went up and talked to him and Tony's idea was do you, do you, listen, we might be aliens, but you can't say anything because the men in black will come get you. It's real. <laughs> and, he's, and then the sapien said, wait, that movie was smell with? <laughs> to clarify, though, I had also shapeshifted into one of them, so I convinced him that I was a man in black. <laughs> That's true, I think, yeah. I had said, you know smell with. <laughs> Of one of like an example of these guys, so I shaped it into that, and I was like, <laughs> "Like you can't tell fucking anyone, I am, I am the Men in Black." <laughs> and then you like, I know Smell with personally. <laughs> it was great. It was a good moment. So you guys, uh, really so, so you got you you had that mission go off. Then you got back. Oh, we, I, we also forgot earlier. We ha uh, it was the birth of the therapy chair. Yes, uh, there is Lexus therapy sessions now because Lexus forms his nanotech glove into a therapy chair for people to talk about their backstories. Yes. <laughs> and then I talk about stuff. And then you talk about Normally, stuff. Normally, it's just me saying, mm -hmm. and how does that make you feel? Yep. It's not therapy. It's just Lexus wants to hear your hot gossip. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But I'm trying to be supportive. I'm trying, trying to be supportive. I think I did have to talk to Basil about killing my past character as my new character. Yes. <laughs> what a you conversation. Sure it was you very meta. had to save Basil from... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so Basil, on the Divider's base, Basil was like, yeah, I need to get a job because I need some cash. It's, I'm running on empty here. And so Basil went to like a tech <laughs> shop. And was like, okay. Oh, Basil, by the way, okay, wait, I, want I want everyone to, to know. No, I want to say some everyone, context first. I will let me say this. Okay. I want everyone to know there are two different kinds of robot intelligence in this universe. Okay. There's VI, virtual intelligence, and AI, artificial intelligence. <laughs> VI is literally everything. It's the it's the it's Siri that talks to you on your smartphone. It's the freaking intercom system. It's pre-programmed things that can are not sentient and cannot actually learn. Then there is artificial intelligence, which was developed way long ago and is incredibly rare. It's as rare as a unicorn to see one. And when they are discovered, oh my God, is, can you imagine how many people want to say, hey, I want to sell it for parts or I want to learn it or I want to kill it. I, there, all manner of things are thought. People want it. So generally, AI hide as VIs. Now, Basil. Yeah, go ahead. I was also going to say for context. Basil was doing Lexus that. Lexus had learned... <laughs> that Basil was a true AI and mm -hmm. had a very lukewarm reaction for reasons because of a backstory he has. And Lexus knows about true AI stuff. Like, it's part of his story. And I thought people might pick up on that just because of that. Inc I was making a point to make it so lukewarm. <laughs> Lee took that as, ah, oh, it's okay. It's just a, it's a true AI. Not that special. So, uh, Basil went to go get a job at Tech Shop, didn't ask for how much they would like to be paid. And when the man asked, how much would you like to be paid? Basil said, I don't know, just pay me anything. So Basil got pennies <laughs> and oh then decided, I want a raise after one day of work and said to this man, and I quote, I am a true AI, you should pay me more. Now, 
as we've just Parker has just said, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and this man proceeded to lock down this shop and interrogate Basil to see if Basil was telling the truth. And Basil there were turrets had... coming out of the ceiling. <laughs> and Basil texted Lexus, uh, saying, "Go, oh God, please help me. This man has locked me up." <laughs> Where I had to break down this door and convince this man, who was very certain he had just found a unicorn of all unicorns, uh, that this is just a liar robot that I bought for cheap. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was the excuse I had to come up with, and that Basil just always lies, and that's why. They were so cheap. So we got out of that, barely. And I proceeded to say, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and then we did therapy chair. Yeah, then we did therapy chair. So uh, then I believe, then I believe what happened was... I think that was the then last... Was the, that was the last fuck around thing that happened. And then the the watcher showed up because they were you were in a meeting with Nash about something, and like you I were in this conference room. I don't really remember what the meeting. Was I think about. it was a debrief just about like what happened with like the crystals and everything, and everyone in like the post because we couldn't do the meeting when we got there, obviously because of like the trial and everything. Yeah, so it was just basically an update on the Eberron situation, and remember that um. The Watcher said, I'll let you ha hold those crystals as long as you keep them safe. But he did say he was going to come for them at some point. He said he was going to come get them. And now there's two. And he has seen you guys cause a lot of wanton destruction at this point. And killed the guy that was holding one of the last ones. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and yeah you, you guys also killed the man who made the promise with him. Oops, that's not my fault. That's on fucking Lee. I take no part in this. Mm -mm. So I take no part in this. The Watcher. Uh, Kai, keep going. You're doing good. Okay, so the Watcher showed up, and Nash, being a very powerful psionic, was like, "Who the fuck is that?" And proceeded to have basically a psionic seizure because this man was melting her brain. Yikes. It was not great. Uh, it turns out the Watcher is stronger than Nash. Uh, Lexus tried to fight him and also instantly got bodied. So that was not great. Wait, you didn't get bodied. You, he used a thing that redirected you and you kicked one of Nash's guards. <laughs> yeah, in the face. I sure did. I, fuck, I fucking. <laughs> you sure did do that. You drop kicked him, I think. Because Lexus is great at kicking. <laughs> You lit. You said, "All right, I'm gonna run up and drop kick him," and, I, and you made a thing like you made some kind of save, and then he basically used a redirect power, and you drop kicked one of Nash's cards. <laughs> it's like, okay, this isn't working. <laughs> it was really funny because in everyone else's perspective, they just saw you run up to Nash's guard and drop kick him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and everyone's like, okay, and Alexis has lost it. <laughs> anyways, anyways, so yeah. I can't remember what happened in that meeting, to be honest. We somehow managed to convince him that we should still keep it, but I can't for the life of me t figure out how, because I was not a part of this since I didn't know about the crystals. In character. Yeah, in character, obviously. Mm -hmm. So basically, what it bo I believe what it boiled down to was it was another convincing. This time, Noxia was the one to convince him, hey, I really want to see this through. And find these two be like young Titan beings a new home that's where it's safe. And the Watcher gave gave her a chance and said, hey, "But you know, I'm watching, and what one false step, and I'm taking them, regardless of what you say." Um, and that's pretty much how that ended. And he, he just left, and you guys bought some more time to have the two do dog crystals still with you. And after very quickly after that, I believe, is when uh, Christine and Alfonso showed back up. And if you remember, last time we saw Christine, she was an assassin trying to kill Noxia. Yes. So na naturally, the group was a little confrontational. So Alfonso explained that, yeah, Christine is a 
was experimented on by the Protectorate, which is a superpower in this sector. Um, and she's basically the Winter Soldier. She's a sleeper agent. You activate when you activate her skills. She is a hyper lethal assassin. Um, until but until you do that, she has no idea. Damn, so, maybe that's Tony, and we just haven't unlocked it yet. Maybe, maybe Tony's Death Junior. Maybe. <laughs> I feel like we're to get to from here to the Death Junior theory is crazy. It's just a crazy amount of events, isn't it? By the way, someone said that they were. T someone asked if it was okay to do theories. It is. I feel like we haven't gotten to the part where theories is relevant because a lot of the stuff we have now is kind of explained. Mm -hmm. But feel free to throw those out there as well. But uh, so what happened next was uh, Christine was then activated on the station, put some threatening letters and blood after killing an officer on the wall, and then ejected down to Suna, which Suna is a planet with barely breathable air that is entirely made up of an ocean of liquid nitrogen and some glaciers. Did we mention the steeple before that? No, that happens. That happens after, I'm pretty sure. No. I think that does no, you're right. It does before. happen right when we're leaving, because we had to... Yep. <laughs> we were... That's the reason why we Oh, split yeah. Up. So, yeah, remember the... So this happened around the same time. It's, again, this is... The, the divider station's a little convoluted in my timeline. I don't remember it all quite well. But they found out that, oh, the Sneeple have infiltrated the Divider's base. Like, there's people who are skin suits for the Sneeple, and they found one, killed it, and it was like, uh-oh, and told security and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Noxia at this point still had not told anyone that, hey, I stole a bunch of the Sneeple's money, like a truckload. <laughs> but that's why I said keep it in mind. Because now I think you know why the Sneeple fa went to the Divider's base to infiltrate yeah, it. Do. And why that entire problem uh, yep. only gets worse. The Sneeple problem in the Divider's base only gets worse from here on out. Rip. Um, you didn't use the evil Sneeple money to feed the orphans. No, no, did not. Um, <laughs> I hate you. Um, then, but Christine ejected and went down, and then escaped and went down to Suna. And Alfonso was like, I'm going after her. And I had the party, like, jumped on and said, all right, here we go. Oh, uh, we, were, we were going to do a Tony adventure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <did>. So <laughs> Molly had a conniption at one point. Mm. <laughs> hmm. So remember the thing that we stole from, uh, or not oh, stole, here. but picked up from the guy that got shot in the streets. That we safely got off without people finding out. It was a data pad that had information on a bunch of rebels to the uh, conglomerate, the other local superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turns out that one of the rebels that they had captured and put in prison was Tony's ex-girlfriend. So, There's Tony... There's horny on mains for crazy ex-girlfriends, yes, by the way. Yes, and I'm the only one <laughs> at the moment without a crazy ex-girlfriend. And Abby's Back character. Well, Abby's character isn't here yet. <laughs> Abby's character isn't here yet, that's true. So I'm the only one without it, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? But anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, so we find out that, and this whole time, Molly's saying, but we have to go here. We need to go here. And we're just like, but Christine just ejected onto this planet. We need to save her. So we decide, uh, begrudgingly against Molly, uh, to save Molly, Christine. Molly was pissed. <laughs> yeah! You guys fucking didn't do the Tony mission! We do it eventually. We do we didn't do the Tony mission. You went for Christine. But yeah, we go on this planet. That was... We literally... Christine did not need our help. We shot ourselves onto a death planet <laughs> for no fucking reason. Parker, I know when I'm going to jump back in, but I need you to take the reins until then. Because it's... Okay. I like that you have points that you really like to Look, explain. Look, you know what it is. Everyone knows what it is. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> the Christine situation took precedence for everyone except it Molly, but Molly though. went with it. No, okay, <laughs> I almost got killed on that planet by a fucking Kraken for no goddamn reason because Christine absolutely can take care of herself and is so much stronger than Tony. <laughs> what was Tony 
adding to the situation. <laughs> what really? Who benefited from Tony being launched into ice hell? Who? <laughs> so, land. Uh, so, Alfonso, desperate to go after his girlfriend, uh, and the party jumped in with him. Basically, stole a junker ship. Um, and who was it? The it was Basil Curtis and Zaheer and that joined him on the junker ship, and then yep. Tony and Lexus got into another escape uh, divider's escape pod and just jettisoned down there. And then we cut to the next session, which starts with to with Tony and Lexus situation, where they are floating in an endless sea of of liquid nitrogen floating on this metal tank that was their escape pod, and they're just on top of it sitting there. Tony is pissed as possible. And Lexus is just puttering them along. No, you were you came later. Yeah, I promise. Oh, uh, you did come later. And okay. then uh, you well, Lexus just uses his nanotech weapon to make a little fan to just them along in the ocean while Tony is just berating him for this decision. <laughs> And it was amazing. If there is a buddy cop movie to be made out of this game, it's Tony and Lexus. They are a dynamic 100%. duo in every sense of the way. And so they found they came upon a glacier, uh, like a large glacier patch that had Basil on it because part of the wreckage of Alfondo's ship was there, and Basil had just fallen out and was just there. And Basil was like, "Hi guys!" And then they all like stood up on it and were like. Hey, what's going on? And then they heard some rumblings. And so then what we like to call the Nitro Kraken showed up because this planet is inhabited by nitro by nitrogen based beings that look a lot like giant squids. Um, came around, uh, fucked him up a little bit. Uh, Kai took some heavy hits. I took, he took a lot hits. of heavy hits. My, my weapon was used as a shield a little bit. So it took some hits too. We have what we lived. Uh, you, you guys fended oh, off. Actually, there's They're one legs. thing I'll point out about my character that I forgot. Because there's... I don't want to go into detail because it's complicated. But there's, like, strain in this system for certain things that you can do. And my character has features. And I almost you maxed only, out on that strain. You can only body... Like, body mod stuff and, yeah, like, biotech causes system strain to your bodily system. And if you take too much, you just die. Yeah, so I almost maxed out. I was, like, right there. But I didn't. I was still alive. I just need to yeah, point it just, out for You later. just had to wait it out. You just had to wait it out. It goes away eventually. We are fucked up. And then you guys got back onto the uh, little capsule and just went <laughs> some more. Um, until eventually Noxia came down uh, in a borrowed ship from the Dividers, picked you guys up and was like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, <laughs> And then, so, you guys, like, as you were scanning the planet for f any signs of metal, oh, not any signs no, of metal, no. but you were you were basically just puttering along trying to figure out a plan. No, this is the part when I can take the reins. <laughs> All right, there. so, at this point, we're looking for Christine, and we have a scanner that's detecting her comp pad or her cell phone. We're looking for a cell phone for radio waves, basically, but we're not finding anything on this planet, and this is a pretty big ship. So it should be able to find it, but it can't. So I then pitched the idea, why don't we use a metal well, what detector? What happened first? Where did me and Morgan go? What happened first? No, guys? this doesn't happen yet. <laughs> okay. This is the prelude. I say, okay. we should use a metal detector. And Basil says, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> don't know why, because this is, might I remind you, a planet of entirely nitroglycerin. No people, no buildings, no metal. Liquid nitrogen. <laughs> so a metal detector was my idea, but it got shut down. I said well okay whatever i'm not going to argue with this and that's <laughs> when, when later <laughs> on happens knows. and this is when parker decides that the crystal that morgan has been keeping the tier of aquila i believe yeah tier of aquila she starts to uh converse with it uh mentally using telepathy and brings morgan into secrets at the same time <laughs> as this happens we're still trying to figure out this idea. By the way, Secrets is just a separate voice channel we have so that if a DM needs to say something to a player that the others cannot hear, we could use that. Yes. So we can't hear them and they can't hear us. Uh, so they leave and Lee as Basil starts saying, what if they're using cloaked signals? And I say, what the fuck 
is a cloaked <laughs> signal. And Lee says, I quote, uh, I'm a robot. I just know these things. <laughs> now, in my head, I would normally never just argue like this with Lee, but then I realize Parker's gone, and we have to entertain ourselves somehow. So I don't let this go. I do yes. not. I it just the greatest. We start arguing for a long time. It was about half an hour. Because 15 minutes into it, it starts petering out of me, just of us back and forth saying, what the fuck is the cloak signal? Metal detectors are a way better idea in, in Basil calling me an idiot. And it just keeps revolving in a circle and it just peters out eventually. I'm like, wow, it's been 15 minutes and Parker's not back. It's crazy. And this whole time, Morgan's having this really important conversation mentally as there's just yelling in the background, muffled. <laughs> but then Basil says something again that riles me up and we go for 15 more minutes. And I'm sure that Sophie and Molly just tune out at yeah, some point. I, I never remembered the origin of cloak signals because I no, think I, I was... out so fast. I was listening every once in a while. I tried to de-escalate, but I gave up on that. Yep. Um, Sophie was just there. Sophie was just sitting there and was suddenly in the middle and just looked around like, what the fuck? <laughs> and we're just going at it. Just yelling at the tops of our lungs. I'm sure my neighbors hated me, but I was not letting this go as long as Parker was not in the voice chat. And he wasn't still. And, and near half an hour got, had been gone past. And... Basil, I think Lee either just like gets tired of the argument or just wants to start something and fronts up on Lexus and says, I can like take you in a fight or something. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> this is the same robot that like almost died to two points of damage in session one versus my martial artist cybernetically enhanced fighter. Mm -hmm. So I just say, I can drop kick you into the stratosphere as Parker and Morgan join back into me saying that. And I say, what the fuck? <laughs> Because at this point, so Morgan had been having, and Noxia had been having a converse, telepathic conversation with the with the descendant of Arya, which was Aquila, who was a very nice kind of life-giving dog spirit. It was a very wholesome, very nice, and very serious conversation. And then we come back to sheer screeching. And I didn't I know, know what, what happened. This is easily I'm my... Not, that is never, <laughs> Sophie, that had never happened up to that point, and it has never happened again. <laughs> It I is, did not expect that. It is my favorite moment in any D and D anything ever for me. Also, I, no, there's no I hard feeling with Lee because again, I would never have done this if Parker was here, oh, yeah. and it was just all in fun because it was like in character and meant nothing. I'm pretty sure Kyle saw you in real life. Your head was red as a tomato, though. I oh man, I was yelling loud. <laughs> And I never heard. I to this day, my biggest regret in D and D is that I didn't hear the cloaked signals conversation. Yep, that's the yep. cloaked signals com incident, and it shall forever be ingrained Parker, in my mind as the makes best you thing. Feel better. I was mm -hmm. there, and I still had no idea what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what summary... a bunch of memes of it. I think I have like a. There's so many of memes. Oh, there was a lot of memes. So that many night. memes. Half an hour of yelling at each other over fucking cloaked signals in a metal detector. So then, with through the conversations with Aquila, uh, he finally manifested as kind of a puppy. But he he did breathe life on you guys, as in he gave you all, he healed you all. Not my system so, strain. Not your system strain, unfortunately. You can't do that. But you guys have been healed from the fight with the Kraken, with the Nitro Kraken. That was fine. So, then, you go, you all pick up a signal finally from the phone, and you follow it to this big glacier that it looks like Christine's pod has crashed into the side of. Uh, you kind of hover the ship down near it, and... Alexis and Noxia go down. Kai, I'm glad Morgan's not here to defend herself for this Oh boy, part. so I'm going to have to narrate this again as right. well? It's you. Listen, this whole section is really you-centric, so yes. go for it. So we get down to this big gl big glacier of nitroglycerin ice, um, and there's the Christine's crashed pod, and we find her compad. Now, I believe what happens is we get a message... It's just this man on the other end uh, telling That's us that... Nitroglycerin. It's just nitro... nitrogen. L liquid nitrogen. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is solid. I guess, so. solid nitrogen. I guess it's solid nitrogen at this point. Solid nitrogen. So 
uh, he's just, he basically lists off all our names and says that something ominous around, like he was watching us and everything. And I go... It's basically a threat. I go up to pick up the compad, failing my perception check. But Noxia succeeds. Now, Parker then says to Morgan, you start hearing beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. And <laughs> says, and Morgan's decision was, I'm going to just teleport out. Lexus can take it. And, and then, well, no, then I they said, I'm going to teleport out. And I said, do you take Lexus with you? Because te the teleporting psy psychics can take people can't with them. That. You can't do that. And Morgan just said, no, he's fine. He can take There it. was no re to this day, there is still no reason that I can see that Morgan did not just take him with her. But she just said, nah, he's fine. So, I think and Morgan actually just hates Kai. That's what that I was, remember. That's what they I had 34 health and 4 health on my shield. So that's 38 health. Parker rolled the dice. Said, You were in the middle of a C4 explosion. You ran out as quick as you could, but you were still in the middle of it. I had also said, I, I'm going to use my shield to protect myself. That's the 4 health shield. And Parker said, rolled the dice. It was a lot of dice. And said, You take 30. Seven damage, and I'm desperately looking at my sheet and my 34 health. Say, does that count for my shield too? And he, with the blessings of a god, says yes. So they all see Lexus launch out of the pod, fire and all, dying, bleeding, but with exactly a point of health. Can we also point out. The fact that it's pr you probably figured it out, but this system's brutal for death because when you run out of HP, you are dead. It's not like 5e where you have a down state and you can still be healed. <laughs> there so are no dead. death states. If Parker had rolled one more damage on hitting my shield before or on this C4, I would have been Lexus dead. would have lasted for five sessions and then died. I would have been dead. Another near death experience. What a way to go out. Because what Morgan said he can take it. I could not. I don't have die hard, guys. I don't have die hard. So yeah, I proceeded to spend the rest of the session in the coma. You, you got to the ship and said, please don't rattle the ship too much, because if I take one point of health, damage, I die. If I trip and fall, that's it. Yep. Anything. If you guys poke me too hard, I die. <laughs> so this is the point. Where they were going to go back to the Divider's base. And then we went on break and we started switched over to my other the... campaign. That's where we, we started, started fifth D Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. and Our home game of that. That's when we started it. So. When we come back. Because this is what we do in our group. With my games we switch between the two. The two long running ones. Um, when we come back. We don't. I had something I wanted to do. Which was kind of a half-baked idea, but I still liked it. I still thought it was interesting. Where I was going to tell them, hey guys, before we get back into the main star, like the stars without number game, let's do a cool one-shot idea I have. That's kind of Ready Player One inspired. And so I just had them make characters, and they were all this like motley crew in this city, where the city's owner, it was literally Ready Player One, the city's like owner had died and left this mysterious mystery to his riches and the deed to the whole city, basically. And so their whole objective was to solve solve the riddle. So they all made fun characters and did that for a while. Um, and this is when Abby had joined our group officially. So Abby, before I introduce your character, who were they? I'm sorry, I had to death in. What? What? We're introducing it's your character. Who, who you. is your character? Who? Oh. Um, who was your character when you joined at this point? A very small half elf chick with fake hair um wore basically a tech suit and a big jacket and clunky boots and fell through a portal while looking at them touching things mm -hmm. so they were on this treasure hunt and then this character naomi came through who we call neo uh essentially in their eyes fell through this portal and then naomi came here and said hey you guys need to wake up. You aren't you. You are Noxia. You are Lex. As you... Basically, what I had done is I had matrixed them instead of Ready Player One them. 
<laughs> and Neo, who is now the who basically is the tech it's guru funny. and the pilot. Them and it, and Ready Player One them. Yeah. yeah, no, that was the bait and switch. And so Neo's whole mission from because Neo's also from the Dividers came there sent by Nash to rescue them because they were told you're in this virtual world, figure out how to get out, and I can get you out, and oh, like I can pick you up up wherever you are. And all of them but Zaheer were there, and they were like, "Oh shit!" And then they a really funny moment too was when Kai switched from his like his fake persona character sheet to Lex's actual character sheet. He still had one health. Yeah, I so asked, he actually Parker, took damage from did switching. I, I asked Parker, "Did I get healed?" And he said, "No." Oh, I lost health. So, so going from a level one character to his like a level seven or eight character, he lost health. <laughs> I was still bleeding out and dying. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it was a it was a half baked idea, but it was still kind of fun. Where you guys uh, found your way out of this virtual world, and um, you learned that as you were ascending in the atmosphere of Suna, this VI, this program that was being run by this base that was almost entirely frozen under a glacier, long abandoned, but had some strange mad science going on in it. It was basically a program that captured ships. It was kind of on an auto track of capturing ships and putting people to sleep in ships that were in the atmosphere at random and would bring the ship down and would capture you and put you in this virtual world for experimentation and imprisonment, really. You guys fought your way out of that. You kind of melted down the whole place. You did at one point in the virtual world have to fight a giant oolong, which was really funny. Uh, Zaheer, who had not gotten sucked into the virtual world, found you guys from the top and just started pressing buttons that made some whack shit happen. Yeah, made Oolong big. It made Oolong huge. And, uh, yeah, you guys got out, and you were introduced to Neo, who was now your pilot, who had her own ship, who was, which was decently big and enough for you all to live on. And now, the party yeah, was basically... Yeah. to. Mm -hmm. The ending of that with the uh, tunnel that we had to go through to try and fucking leave. Oh, oh god! Yeah. Oh yeah, out. I made a with my weapon a skateboard that I would because I failed a save, so I was basically paralyzed. Wait, hold on. Someone describe the tunnel. Someone oh. describe. It. So it was just we I basically funnels into this one tunnel of our escape, and there's these windows on the other side but there's nothing in them other than occasionally lights would flash in them like periodically and it would do like i think it was peri um one after the other just do 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 all the way down and we discovered very quickly that if you touch that light it's gonna hurt it paralyzes you <laughs> it paralyzes you and you can't move and it lasts long enough that you cannot like escape it even when it's turned off. Fortunately, I can still use my nanotech glove because that's just a mental connection. Yep. So I basically I failed that, but just used my weapon as a skateboard and just sort of moved myself down the corridor. <laughs> I think Basil failed it pretty bad. Uh oh. Huh? What? Hmm. Ooh. What? Oh. No, we're good. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, what happened after we uh, finished the... Uh, we left the Matrix? Uh, after you left the Matrix, you went back. Neo was got... forced to babysit you and didn't want Neo to Neo was told that her new assignment is to babysit you all. Thus, Abby was forced into the party. Oh, yeah. I also work for um, Noxia's hot ex-girlfriend. I, I work for the Dividers. And then... Uh... Yeah, by the way, since Sophie had to leave, Molly, it might be your responsibility to, when we get to the uh, wedding, to dis to <laughs> give us the grandeur. I'm honest, guys, I'm probably going to head out as well. I I had a long two days. and I Oh, you're fine. I understand. <laughs> but you're if gonna, you, you can head really out. need me to come back uh, at me, and I might. Honestly, we could probably just part two this. We've been going for three hours. We could. Yeah, I think we should probably just part two it. <laughs> what do I do for that stream? <laughs> Right, we don't have to do anything. We just do the round table. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll put this a pin on this so we can finish up. By the gotta... way, guys. Oh. 
keep Kai to that part two. Yes. Because the first half of this campa- campaign does not compare to the second half in terms <laughs> of sheer chaotic stories. We have... Oh, it's so good. So we, go, we have this planet, this planet, this planet, you... briefly this planet, briefly this planet. I will give you several phrases. I will give you several phrases to look forward to. One is preachable. Zahir terrorism. Um, irresponsible dog owners. That's a lesbian. That's a lesbian. That's a lesbian. Space Nazis. <laughs> Space Nazis. That's Junior. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That's Junior. <laughs> Death Junior. Three hour fiance. Three hour fiance. <laughs> oh, Psycho. you know what? McDonald's. McDonald's. Space McDonald's. Space McDonald's. T- <laughs> Zaheer and Tony become Drake and Josh. McDonald's orphans. McDonald's orphans. Or funnies. All right, Kai, you can wrap stream. All right, <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, yeah, don't you have to catch the Reggies? I mean, I'll do that on a different stream. I, I took know, like two hours to do this. I know, but you could do that on. I could, but that won't take as long. Too. I know, but that'd be just for the starting it. I suppose. Yep, we can try it. All right, see ya. (laughs)